thanks to God whose word was spoken in the deed that made the earth. His the voice that called a nation. His the fires that tried her worth. God has spoken. Praise him for his open word. Happy Sabbath and welcome to the Countdown to the End Evangelistic Series live from Portmore, St. Catherine. I'm Daniel Pasley. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, Daniel. I'm Lizeth Martin. And yes, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is in Brayton and Portmore, Hellshire, Gregory Park, and 10 city districts are delighted to join the Central Jamaica Conference in welcoming you to this. Let's say together, brethren, count down to the end. I heard you, evangelistic series. Daniel, Sabbath number three. Sabbath number three, and I must say a special welcome to those who are watching us on CJC online, whether on YouTube, on Facebook, on the various platforms of churches across the conference, on Blessed TV and NCU TV. We are global. We are worldwide. Happy Sabbath. We're happy to have you. Praise the Lord. So as we're counting up and counting down, we know that you are anticipating a wonderful Sabbath school, which will be conducted by the Hellshire District of Churches. Just before we rejoice in music led by the Newland Praise Team, let us stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you our all. We give you our worship. We give you our offering this morning. And we're asking that your name be magnified and praised and glorified as we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We are here in the sanctuary on this blessed Sabbath day. And because the Lord has been good to us, we are going to hail the Sabbath morning. Our first hymn for this morning is hymn 394, Far From All Care, hymn 394.
hymn is on Jordan's the Stormy Bank from our old hymnal, hymn 553, hymn 553.
times in my childhood as I traveled so far by nights for so weary I'd grown my father's arms would sleep around me and jam So with everyone, the scripture reading is taken from St. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. I will read in your hearing. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. Here ending the portion of God's holy word. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let God's people everywhere who are able to stand, stand with me as we petition the throne of grace. Let us pray. Eternal God and our righteous everlasting Father. We are indeed grateful, dear Father, for you bringing us out into your courts this morning. Lord, it is not anything good that we have done, but it is because of your goodness and you bid us come. Come and worship you on this your blessed holy Sabbath day. Lord, we thank you for this privilege. But Lord, even as we come, we recognize that we are unworthy. We have sinned, God. We have come short of your glory. We have done the things that we should not have done. And Lord, we have left the things that we should have done undone. Have mercy upon us, we pray. Forgive us, O oh God, for our feebleness and our peevish ways. Lord, help us to understand that we dare not make it without you. So this morning, as I come in your presence and pray on behalf of your people, take everything that is unlike thee from me, O oh God, and may my prayer go up as sweet incense before you. Father, we want to thank you this morning for life. We want to thank thee for your provision. Lord, spiritually, Father, what would we do without you? Lord, we thank thee for raiment and shelter and food, dear God, that you provide for us on a daily basis. Lord, sometimes we do not know where the, the means is coming from, dear Father. But, oh God, in due time, you present them to us, and we want to thank you. Lord, we want to thank you for the plan of salvation. For while we were yet sinners, Lord, you died for us. And as long as we come to the point where we recognize that there's no other who can save, Dear Jesus, help us to humble ourselves in your sight and let your Holy Spirit use us. God, we pray, we give thee thanks for those who have come to you since the uprising of this 10th cathedral. Lord, we ask that you would bless them. Keep them in your keeping care, Lord. And, oh God, we ask that if, they get, if and when they get discouraged, remind them that you never will leave them alone. God, may as they come into the different churches, may we nurture them, may we care for them, may we show them love. And, Lord, may we introduce to them the pathway of discipleship so that they will go and, and find, um, be fishers of men. Oh Lord, we, we, we praise thee for the evangelist who has allowed himself to be used by you night after night. God, continue to empower him. Continue to bless him. Continue to be with his family. And oh God, when the last person on earth who is left to answer your call, may you all, Father, just call us one and all into your kingdom. We pray this morning for the sick and the afflicted, those who are online and cannot make it to your house. Lord, touch them in a special way today. Touch your people everywhere over the earth remotest bound, online wherever they are viewing from. May somebody cry out today, I yield. I cannot hold it out any longer. And oh God, may heaven rejoice today. 
I pray for those who are halting between two opinions, Lord. Be with them, strengthen them, encourage them, help them to know that you will not bring them this far and leave them, but you will continue to be their God. Lord, the waters will be troubled. Let your Holy Spirit continue to guide your people. Oh Lord, touch the sick and the afflicted, I pray today. And may at last, oh God, when all is over and your kingdom shall come, may none of us under this 10th cathedral or on listening online or your people anywhere that worship you today be missing from your kingdom. Father, I pray that you would forgive whatsoever I fail of asking thee. Grant it unto us according to your will, because we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon-coming King. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. The King is coming. He's coming one day soon. And we ought to be ready. Good morning, everyone. For, the first, for those who are coming for the first time here at the tent, and for those online, the first time visitor, there is another way that we, we salute you each Sabbath morning. We say, happy Sabbath. Sister Stacy. Yes, let's Sister try Lord. that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And happy Sabbath. happy Sabbath. Welcome. 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 Indeed, indeed, it is a pleasure. It is indeed a great joy that we would have been able to gather because the Word of God reminds us that in the presence of the Lord, Lord. Sister Baru, there is indeed joy forevermore. Amen, amen. This morning, we are looking at a simply, simple theme. Going home. Going home going home. May I see the hands of those who are preparing to go home when the Lord comes. Amen. Amen. Look at those hands, sister. Indeed, it is indeed a good. But is it our home here in Portmore? Certainly not. Oh, yes. Sister Stacy. Yes. You've been at the office all day. It's been a very hectic day. You had meetings to attend, reports to do, and it really has been a bit of you know, troubling time for you. Right. Nevertheless, you were able to finish it on time. Yes. It's now 10 minutes to five, and you're preparing, you've cleared your desk, and you're preparing to leave. Share with us some of the thoughts that are going through your mind as you think about going home. I had that thought only yesterday evening, Sister Baru, as I would have been preparing to leave the office, and after you would have gone through a rigorous, hard, pressing day, there is a sense of joy, a relief. You feel ecstatic to know that you are now at the end of a tireless work day and you have the joy of heading straight to your beautiful home. Amen. Well, Sister Stacy, as wonderful as those thoughts are, nothing can be compared to that place that God has gone to prepare for us and the feelings that we have thinking of home. As we would have been listening to the scripture reading, Sister Baru, we were reminded by the gentleman who read that the Lord has gone to prepare a place for us. And he has given us the assurance, church, that he will come again and do what? And receive us unto himself that where he is, we may be also. We will now be hearing from one of our sisters. Sister Williams. Sister Regina Williams, who will share her joy of what it means to go home. Sister Williams, we invite you to share. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Amen. That sounds better. No, I've been given two minutes. I'm going to try and condense six months' worth of testimony in one. <laughs> I suffered a heat stroke last year, early last year. And I went down. I collapsed in the house. And... <laughs> I, I saw Jesus and I saw death standing before me. <laughs> and you know who I chose though? Jesus. And when I went down and I couldn't breathe with the little breath that I had, I said, Father, wash me. Even now, wash me and cleanse me. 
brethren, when you're down there, when you're facing debt, you know, the house, the car, the bank account can't help you. It can't help you. You got dead and left it. So guess what you have to do? Make it right. Prepare in your heart who side you're going to be on. I chose the Lord's side. And when I thought it was this, I, I, I call everybody name I could that come to me. I call the brethren. We are worldwide. I don't know them, but I call them. And brethren, I, when I realized I'm still here, I said, Lord, if it's not my time, raise me up. Before I could say, raise me up, I was sitting up. My feet, my, my, one side of my body was that, that way, the other, my ankles the other way. And I sat up and I turned my ankle to the direction that the rest of my body was in. But I couldn't get up. A long story short, my husband, we got in touch with my husband and he came and took care of business. I couldn't walk. <laughs> Lord of mercy. And let me tell you something, the Lord raised me up. When I went to the doctor, Dr. Levy told me he has had at least two patients who died from heat stroke. I am still here. Amen. The work not done. It's, look here, since COVID, I've been to church only one time when, the, when this, the, um, COVID was going on. I had to stay home. But brethren, me tell the Lord the other day, so me can't me not like stay home and come out. And here I am. I ask the Lord to increase my faith. Be careful what you ask the Lord for. Because when I am telling him increase my faith, me never did know say gonna make me experience death. Come close to it, just a breath away. But here I am. Deliverance come. The Lord has delivered me. Deliverance come. And brethren, no matter what you're going through, look here. Hold on to Jesus. Don't let him go. You can't see what he's doing, but he's working behind the scene. Deliverance come. Me can say, deliverance come. And all the songs the praise team was singing was for me. This is my morning. And I'm here to say, to God be the glory, great and wonderful things he has done.
me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. Jesus is the way to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Welcome to CJC Jewels, our joyful children's church, right here at Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, where there is joy, joy, joy. Invite all your friends to join us, yes, right now, and every Sabbath morning at 9.30. Oh, yes. And we will have a good time with Jesus. Who are the little jewels with me this morning? Jordan, Matthew, Monica, Michaela. Welcome, little ones. All of this quarter, our theme is Family of God. One more time, little ones. Family of God. And our topic is I've Got Roots. I wonder, why do plants need roots, little ones? Plants need roots because roots help them to stay firm in the ground. Excellent! Micah. Plants need roots because when they're they don't grow up in the ground. My little ones are brilliant. What do you have to say, Matthew? Roots help the water. Roots help plants to get water. Okay, Jordan, what do you think? Roots are the base of trees to help them stay down in the ground. Excellent! My little ones are brilliant. What do you think, boys and girls? Ask mommy, ask daddy to help you to write it in the chat. Why plants need roots? Well, I am thinking about my family. Who is the root of my family? Hmm, little ones, who would you say is the root of your family? My father. Anybody else? Answer. Everybody's saying daddy? Yes. All right, let us say hello, daddy. Hello, daddy. Today, we are giving thanks for our fathers. Thank you, Jesus, for our daddies. Daddies are strong like roots. Well, happy Sabbath, little ones. Help me say happy Sabbath. Happy, happy Sabbath, Sabbath, little ones. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another Sabbath day. We ask for your blessings on all of the boys and girls, and let us all say, Amen. And now it's time for Jewel's Showcase.
happy Sabbath, everyone. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Welcome to Exploration Station. And today we'll be talking about roots. I'm Auntie Daintian, and here with me today are my friends, and we'll be talking about roots and what happens when you have good roots. So we have the evidence of it right here. We have some fruits. Guys, what fruits are these? Lemon. Passion fruit. And this is a big dragon fruit. Now, boys and girls, when we think about roots, who in the family comes to mind? Teddy. Father. Very good. Yes, yes. Right, dad comes to mind. And now we'll be putting daddy on the family tree. right there in the family. He is the anchor and we know that roots are like anchors in a family and he keeps the family together. Okay, do you want to try the dragon fruit, guys? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. yes. Okay. Isn't this pretty, boys and girls? Look at the rich pink color. Okay, each one of you can take a nap to food, water into the tree so that the tree can send it out to the fruit. So boys and girls are of the family. So boys and girls, thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye! Hi boys and girls, I'm here because I dare to be a dad. It is a privilege for me to be the father of two boys, Caleb James and Dominic Joshua. And did you know, boys and girls, that the Bible speaks about fatherly love and the importance of loving your children? Yes, that is why the Bible says in John 15 verse 9, As the Father loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. And John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and i want to let you know boys and girls that your father loves you and they too dare to be a dad i pray that as we go through today we will remember the love of our fathers let us pray heavenly father and great god i thank you so much for the opportunity to be co-laborers with you and today, we are recognizing fathers and the love of our fathers. We pray, dear God, that you will continue to bless our fathers, those who are standing up for their children and doing their best for them. Cover every single boy and girl that is watching today and that, dear God, they will see the love of Jesus through their fathers. Thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At 9.30 a.m., invite all your friends to see J.C. Jewels. So long, little ones. Bye. review of the adult Sabbath school lesson. God has been good to us. We have been studying some wonderful lessons. This morning, the theme is worship that never ends. My two panelists are Elder Clayton Nelson, who attends the Portmore Seventh Adventist Church, and Elder Anthony Johnson, who attends the Greater Portmore Church. Welcome, gentlemen. We are delighted to have you. Just before we go any further, I'm going to invite you to bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Elder Johnson, can you be so kind as to pray for us? Great God, we give you thanks for your goodness. We give you thanks for your word that we must live by. We ask you, O Holy Father, as we review your words, that your spirit will pervade every heart, 
and may each one get what is meaningful for their experience. We pray to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Elder Nelson, please read the memory text for us. Psalm 114, 104 rather, verse 33. The psalmist says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Amen. So as we look at this lesson, we recognize that as our experience of God's grace and power increases, we are prompted to ask the question like the psalmist, what shall I render to the Lord? for all his goodness, all his grace, all his blessings towards us. The simple answer, gentlemen, is we need to devote our lives to God because he has been good. Elder Johnson, what is your take on the whole matter of worship? What would you define worship as? Well, the scripture, the, the wise man in Proverbs, Ecclesiastes rather, 13, tell us that the entire conclusion our existence is to fear God and give him glory therefore as we look at worship worship we worship God for two basic reasons one because of his greatness and two our response to that greatness therefore we will discover as we go along pastor that worship is a total life experience to the goodness of Almighty God. Amen. 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 Elder Nelson, what's your take on the whole matter of worship? What does worship entail for you? For me, worship means that whatever I do, whatever I say, is to give honor and glory to God. It means it is a lifestyle of giving praises and honor and glory and obedience to God. It means an entire, what's the word I'm looking for? Self-sacrificing to God. Therefore, when we come to worship, it is not just to lift up holy hands in, this, in the sanctuary, but it is a lifestyle given over to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I, I like those two comments. Worship, Elder Nelson, based on my notes, a life lived bowing down. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So worship is not just waving hands and saying glory, hallelujah. Worship is a lifestyle. But you know, gentlemen, I've heard people say that the church is boring. They came to church last week, Sabbath. Not, not here under this tent. But for example, they went to a particular church and they said, oh, church was boring. Can church be boring? Church, my brothers and sisters, cannot be boring. Go ahead, Elder. No, it, 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 this week would have brought to our mind exactly what it is that you bring um, to the congregation as we meet in corporate worship. Pastor, if you have no closet experience throughout the week and you are just coming to get you might turn up one day and there is not much for you to get. But if you, throughout the week, have been anchored and connected in Jesus Christ, then when you meet at the place where God designed for his people to meet and you have something to share and your heart is open because when you share, you will have less than you brought so that you have place for the other of God's saints to give to you. So it's a two-way street. So in that way, worship is going to be impactful and it will never be a boredom experience. Amen. Amen. And so my brothers and sisters, I've heard people say, church, boring. Yeah. Church cannot be boring. We are the ones who are boring. That's right. When you come into the presence of God, just a while ago, I was around the back with these men, and we were meditating. And I, we sat and listened to those children who were singing, I want to make heaven my home. The joy that flooded our souls. When I listened to the testimony of that lady who, who, who spoke about God's goodness, 
I can't help but just say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so when you come into God's presence, there can be no form of boredom. Because brother Daniel, God's presence, sister Lisseth, God's presence brings liveliness. And if you find yourself as a Christian, you are just going through the motions and you're just bored and you will just drag yourself. And boy, if I catch a catch, something is wrong. You must come with an attitude. Bring to the worship and you will get a blessing. Lord, amen. Go ahead, Elder Nelson. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are what? Pleasures. Pleasures forevermore. So when we come into the presence of God, the very presence of God gives life. Yes. Therefore, service would not be boring, Sister Barrett. Service turn up to the point where we start to burn up under the tent. Amen, Amen somebody. And because of God's very presence in this place, worship can never and will never be boring. Amen. He used that word, not me. <laughs> Amen. But, but Elder Nelson, well said. So, so let's go now, Sister Carlene. We're looking at singing to the Lord a new song. What does a new song in this context mean? Singing Elder Roxwell Lawrence, Sister Shalane, what does singing a new song mean? Gentlemen. Okay, uh, according to Psalms 33 and verse 3, Psalms 40 and verse 3, Psalms 96 and, and verse 1, the psalmist encouraged individuals to sing a new song. And in this context, a new song is talking about our experience. Amen. And, Amen. and so each time, even as we go over the same thing, La last year when we talk about the Lord is my shepherd, but when there is nothing around, you can repeat the Lord as your shepherd with a new experience because every day with Jesus, as the Negro spiritual says, is sweeter than the day before. Amen. So it's an experience live with him when we talk about a new song. Amen. Amen. Well said. Ellen Nelson, chime in, please. Singing a new song unto the Lord. As Elder Johnson says, each day should be sweeter than the day before. And from my own personal experience with God, I can safely say without a doubt that the God who saved me is still around to save me. This morning, he woke me up and planted my feet on the rock to stay. And the rock is who? Christ Jesus himself. Therefore, as a people, God's people, we are to sing a new song. Every day we must have a new song. Amen? Every day. And because of that, others may come, taste and see how good our God is. Amen. A new song, Elder Nelson, Elder Johnson, speaks to a recognition Elder Lawrence, of God's awesome majesty and goodness. Now, there are some persons who only have one testimony. And there are some members in the church who may be annoyed. For example, a brother might just get up and say, praise God, God is good. And somebody might be saying, every time I hear him, it's the same thing. Yes. But that is his experience. Yes. It's, it's like the man, you know, who went to the doctor, his son took him to the doctor, he was not feeling well. And he shouted out, hallelujah. So, so the, 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 the son was wondering, what in God's heaven, what was there for him to be saying hallelujah for? He said to his dad, dad, he said to his son rather, son, I read in the National Geographic Explorer that when God forgives, or yes, when God forgives, he throws your sins to the depths of the sea. And the sin is so deep, the sea is so deep that when God throws away my sin, nobody can find it. So he took him out from that spot and he placed him in a naughty corner and he said, man, you have nothing to shout about this time. The man looked through the window again and he said, praise the Lord. Yes. So, so the, 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 the son was annoyed. What 
in God's heaven could you be saying hallelujah, praise God for? He said the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. And the firmament show the sandy work. Amen. The, the, the point of the matter, my brothers and sisters, anywhere you are, you can find something to worship God for. Amen. And let no one steal your testimony. If you only can get up at Wednesday night meeting and say praise God. The old time thing we used to say, Papa Jesus, good. If that's the only thing you can say, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Amen. Because God is good and worthy to be praised. Yeah. Gentlemen, we're running quickly now. So let me run quickly. I'm getting excited as you can see. Up here is hot, but I'm getting so excited. So Amen. let me try to run now. Who may abide in God's tabernacle? What does the term tabernacle mean? Is a tabernacle the physical structure? Does the tabernacle characterize the, the physical building meets with his people we are told the, the, the church the, the, the church or the sanctuary is a congregation where God meets with his people corporately but this tabernacle can be a humble place it can be a grand place but it must be your best effort to meet with God as best as your circumstances amen kind of Elder Nelson the servant of the Lord says that wherever we call upon the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that becomes holy ground. So it doesn't matter where. It could be at the top of a coconut tree. That is the tabernacle of God. Amen. Amen, somebody? Amen. Because God says through Christ, wherever two or three are gathered, he's in the midst and he's here to bless. Amen? Therefore, as a result of that, we, once we put aside self and sin, we can abide in the sanctuary of God. Because we are, God is, that is his sanctuary. Amen. Gentlemen, we have to wrap. But there are a few things, Elder Johnson, Elder Nelson, that I'd like to leave with our congregation. Number one, do not gossip about others. Amen. As God's people, we belong to the tabernacle of God. And when Amen. people come to you with nice, juicy gossip about Elder Johnson, say, ask a question. Did you speak to Elder Johnson about it? If they say no, tell them to go and talk to him, as Matthew 18 says. We must love one another, speak well of each other before their faces and behind their backs. Too often we are too quick to tear down and criticize each other. God's people who are a part of the tabernacle, who worship and love God, must love one another. Amen. We sing that we are marching to Zion. If we don't love each other, we can't march to Zion. We are marching to the kingdom of hell. So gentlemen, as we wrap, let us remember that we are all God's people. We belong to the tabernacle of God. And worship is a verb. Worship, Elder Johnson, is an action. And Elder Nelson, give me your final, final take on this. One sentence, one sentence, and I'm done. In God's presence, there is fullness of joy. And once we come into his presence, we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And when we leave from his presence, we, are going, we need to go and tell others that there's a God who is to be served and that there's a heaven to win and a hell to shun. Amen. God bless you. Psalm 50 and verse 6, the psalmist says, let everything that hath bread praise the Lord. Psalms 46 and verse 17 said, Thy people shall praise thy name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for having been with us today. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. Because when we study, we are brought closer to Jesus. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Loving God and our Father, we thank you for the wonderful lesson that we just reviewed. We thank you, Lord, that you have made us to worship you. May we worship you in spirit and in truth. May our worship be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Stacy, Sister Baru, Jesus is planning a great homecoming soon.
Oh, and yes. guess what? By the grace of God, I'm going to be there. Oh, yes, church. Are you desirous of being in that grand, grand, great uh, getting up morning, as, as I want to refer to it? That's right. Brethren, you are all invited. Will you join us on that great day when the Lord shall come to take his people home? Amen. Indeed. As the songwriter says, what a day. Come on, church, help me. That will be when my Jesus, come on, somebody, I, I shall, shall see. see when I look upon his face. Come on, what? church, help me. The one who saves me by, by his, his grace. grace. Amen. Indeed, indeed. Amen. And to bless our hearts with a reminder that speaks to that is a songstress. Her name is Sister Nordica Russell. She'll be blessing us with an item in song, Sister Baru. Indeed. Listen carefully, brethren. We are going home soon. Amen.
Will you say amen one more time? Amen. What a wonderful God we serve to bless us with the various gifts to be used for His honor. I'm just going to ask you to listen to the following instruction before we have a very important baby dedication. For those who have bags on the seats and you are not using the seats, we have a lot of persons who would like to be seated. We're going to ask for you to work with the ushers. They will be coming to you. We have persons who are senior citizens. We're going to ask the gentlemen, the Seventh-day Adventist men, to ensure that the females are seated, especially our elderly. So please work with us because we want to make sure that we care for those who are elderly and all our females are seated. So the ushers will be coming to you to remove those bags that you have on your chairs so that we can have everyone seated. I'm going to be inviting at this time um, the families and those who are here for this special baby dedication to join me right here at the platform. Uh, Mother Melisha Ring, Father Leonard Edwards, and those who are here to support them in this baby, baby dedication service to join me at this time. Let us sing Jesus Loves the Little Children while we await for the family members and those who are here to come forward. Let us sing together, Jesus Loves the Little Children. happy for Melissa Ring. She has her two little ones that she has brought to be dedicated to the Lord, Lenny Jr. Edwards and Elijah Augustus Edwards. And so today as you bring these little ones to be dedicated to the Lord, I want to share with you from the book of Psalm 127 and verse 3, where the Bible says, children are an heritage to the Lord and the fruit of his womb is his reward. Today, as you bring these little ones to be dedicated to God, I want you to first know that they belong to God. These little ones belong to God. He is the rightful owner, and you have been entrusted to train them in the fear and admonition of God. It is therefore very important that as a mother that you first ensure that you have a true knowledge of God, that you spend time to know God so that you can pass on to these little ones a true knowledge of God. It is your duty as a mother to ensure that the training that you give them is one by precept and example, meaning that you must not only instruct them in what is right, they must see that in your own life as well. And as you train them for God, you must teach them how to be respectful, to be respectful of those who are above them, to be respectful to society, and to be obedient to the laws of, the, of your home. As you train them to be obedient to God's laws, today you are ensuring that they will grow up with values and principles and be responsible citizens in Jamaica. 
And if this is your commitment today to dedicate them to the Lord, I'm going to ask that you respond to the following questions that I'm going to be asking you by saying I do. Do you pledge to train these little children in the fear and admonition of God? Do you recognize that they are gifts from God? And is it your commitment to use the church, use the school, the church, and any means available to you that they may love Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we have a special prayer for the family at this time, dedicating these little ones to the Lord. Amen. Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. You have blessed militia, militia, and you have blessed them with these little ones, Elisha and Lenny. We pray that you will grow, they will be trained in the fear of God. We pray that you'll put a hedge around these little ones, that they will grow to love Jesus and his word. We pray that you'll provide for all their needs so that they will lack nothing and they will come to know God who is their provider and learn to love him because of the exemplary life of mother and father. We pray that this will be a home, a little heaven on earth, where the name of Jesus Christ is spoken frequently. And we pray in a very special way, O oh God, that as these children grow older, and reach the age of consent where they can give their lives to Jesus, that they will make this request and become a part of the church. And therefore, we'll be fit candidates for the kingdom of heaven. We pray that you'll bless the parents financially. And we pray that you'll bless them, that they will send them to the right school, a school that will ensure that the very teachings that they will be taught at the school will be the same that are taught at the home. So bless them, O oh God be with them and we pray that when you shall come that these little ones along with the parents will have a part in your kingdom when you shall come for them in jesus name we pray all right god bless you we have a very special certificate that we will be giving you at the appropriate time god bless you and please ensure that you continue growing them in the fear of god god bless
Let the church say. Let the church say. Amen. Oh, in that beautiful city, the city of God, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. It's always a favorite, always a favorite. Praise the Lord. And we are having a mini Jerusalem experience down here. Amen. Countdown to the end evangelistic series. It's warm here under our triple tent. Triple tent. <laughs> and it's warm online. Yes, it's warm yes. online. What we an have... awesome Sabbath school. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it, Daniel. Well, we have over 2,000 persons all across the world who are viewing us on our various platforms. So whether you're watching us on NCU TV, Bless TV, on our YouTube channel, we have 2,000 persons. And of course, persons are viewing us on platforms of various churches across the conference. So, you know, the Evangelistic Series is a big deal. Praise the Lord. And let us talk about what is happening right under the tent, Municipal Boulevard, Portmore. If you have a seat beside you, could you just raise your hand? Amen. I see some hands going up. The ushers are taking note. Also, the worship experience continues. It's, it's not just a Sabbath day. I want to remind you that tomorrow at 9.30 we will be having your health and you. That following is also growing. Daniel, I know you have a list of favorite topics. Yes, <laughs> and I'm going to give you a recap of some of the topics that I'm sure you all enjoyed this week. On Sunday, we had Design to Deceive. Mm -hmm. On Monday, we had Beast Hunting. On Tuesday, we explored The Creditors Are Coming. On Wednesday, Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. And last night, a very plain, practical message. Yes. Is it okay to be gay? Hmm. Is no. it okay? Oh. Not at oh. all, not at all. And what are we going to talk about today? I'm excited. No, we're not better than Yard. I love it. Although we haven't heard the sermon yet. <laughs> yes, yes. And today we are going to have our baptismal service after the sermon. So, you know, just get, get comfortable and enjoy the rest of the service. Praise the Lord. You know, Daniel, I'm remembering now that the woman at the well got so excited, she ran away and left her water pot. No, somebody last night got so excited after that sermon. Right? They ran away and left their phone charger. Yes, if, you, <laughs> if that was you, yes, you can speak with us. So now, we're going into divine service. Yes, or divine service. Praise the Lord. And who is going to be praying for us? I think that will Dr. be... Dr. Kemar Douglas, Amen. Health Ministries Director at CJC. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful that you've allowed us to enjoy the blessings of your Sabbath. We pray that as we worship you in spirit and in truth, that your Holy Spirit will indeed touch our hearts and our lives. We come with various circumstances and issues and problems. We know that those who are watching online, they too have their various prayer requests, just as those who are underneath the Scandal Cathedral. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you know our needs, you know our wants, you know where we are. You understand immensely what is there in our lives. But you have promised that you will do according to your riches in glory. So we respect and honor you, knowing that sometimes what we want may not be best for us. But what you want will always be best for us. So into your hands we commit every single individual here and those who are watching online, and those who are viewing in their churches across the, the great vast of this earth. We ask that once again that your blessing will come down and fill our souls as we bless you and give our lives to you. For those of us who are already a part of the family of God, we pray that you may strengthen our resolve that no matter what comes, we will hold fast to you and your word. 
to those who are yet to be a part of your family. They're preparing for baptism today. They're in that little valley where they're trying to decide what to do. We pray that your Holy Spirit will threaten them and help them to recognize that there's nothing greater to hold on to than you. This world has nothing to offer. So we pray your Holy Spirit will indeed touch and uh, revive uh, and lead uh, and guide us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. And once again, Heavenly Father, bless the speaker, bless all those who will participate in the service, and we pray that as you use individuals, that Lord, they will not be seen, but you will be seen and glorified. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Happy Sabbath, my brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Have no fear. Jesus Christ is here at this great hallelujah square. You should have no gray here because we are all here to steer. We are delighted to welcome you to the Countdown to the End evangelistic series. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, you look good. There are two reasons for this. Number one, Christ has redeemed you. Number two, my good looks have rubbed off on you. Amen, amen, amen. And so we want to say welcome to everyone who is here. We welcome the 10 churches that are involved in this wonderful evangelistic campaign. I'm talking about Brayton. I'm talking about the Deaf Church. I'm talking about Gregory Park, Waterford. I'm talking about Hellshire, Greater Portmore and Clifton. Can I hear you say amen for them? I'm talking about Portmore. I'm talking about Tent City and Newland, some of the Adventist Church. Can I hear you say amen for them? We want to welcome those who are watching from Canada, those who are watching from the Bahamas, those who are watching from the Cayman Islands, from the Ebenezer, some of the Adventist Church. That's the church, our evangelist pastors. We say welcome to them from the British Virgin Islands, from the Turks and Caicos Islands, from Florida, from New York, all across the United States of America, from UK, from Kenya, we say a special word of welcome. You're welcome once, you're welcome twice, you're welcome again in Jesus Christ. Those who are on my far right, can I hear you say glory, hallelujah. Those who are in the middle, can I hear you say praise the Lord. Those who are on this side, can I hear you shout, thank you, Jesus. Those who are on my far left, can I hear you say, amen. amen. Over on this side, C plus. Over here, so B plus. This side, B minus. And over on this side, A plus, 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 plus. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, we're delighted. We're happy that you are here worshiping with us today. I want to say a big shout out to Jacqueline Campbell and Opal Morant, who are on the YouTube line right now, the YouTube channel. They are actively engaged in the chat. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Remember to bring out tomorrow evening, Brother Barry, Sister Sally, Uncle Larry, Tell them do not tarry because we don't want anyone to be sorry. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sabbath and keep sweet in Jesus. Amen. That was Pastor Barrington McLean. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, that sounds so unlike you. Let's do it again. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Are you happy in the Lord this morning? Yeah. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. Let me see you wave your hands and give the Lord a praise. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. It's good to be here. I'm happy to see you here again today. 
And those of you who join us online, the CJC Online Church, you have been with us since the start of this evangelistic series. We are happy to have you. And we know that there's a blessing in store for you today. You got to invite your family members and your friends everywhere to come and be a part of Countdown to the End evangelistic series. Today is a big day. What do you say? And the Lord is going to work a miracle here under this Canvas Cathedral uh, this morning. I want to take this opportunity to recognize uh, some individuals that are here earlier on. Uh, well, last night, uh, the, the wife of uh, evangelist, uh, Sister O'Connor, uh, was welcomed and recognized. And she's here again, along with the wife of uh, or Bible worker Joshua, they're here. I just want to add my code of welcome to you, and we're happy to have you joining us here again at the Countdown to the End Evangelistic Series. Now, our evangelist has been doing a wonderful job. What do you say? The Lord has been using him in a marked way as he delivered God's word with clarity and conviction. Oh, yes, we have learned so much. As a result of this man of God, I want to say thanks to you, uh, Dr. O'Connor, for having loaned your dear uh, husband to us. I want to recognize the presence of uh, Pastor Roy Dennis, Dr. Roy Dennis, the Family Life Director, Family Life Director, as well as Storeship Director of the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And you will hear from him in a little while. We're happy to have you, Dr. Dennis. He had just finished a, a series in the Turks and Caicos, and he had baptized over 20 precious souls. I've been one for the kingdom of God. Amen, somebody? But he's here today, and I want you to know that in short order, he will be leading out an evangelistic series there in Mandeville. He's a man who is passionate about the mission. What do you say? And we're happy for Dr. Roy Dennis. Also, in a little bit, I will invite the... MP, a member of parliament, uh, Mr. Robert Miller, as uh, the MP for Southeast uh, St. Catherine, uh, to come and bring a word of greeting. You know, he is uh, one of us, a uh, member, one of the elders of our church, and we're happy to have him. And we welcome you, sir, uh, to the countdown to the end evangelistic series. I invite you to say a word to the brethren. Thank you, my president. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's indeed a great privilege and pleasure for me to be here worshiping this Sabbath day. I told Pastor a short while ago that when I won my election in 2020, it was a different feeling than when I gave my life to Christ in 1988. That feeling is something that I look forward towards when you give your life to Christ. So as we continue to count down to the end, let us invite our neighbors. Let us live a godly life. Let us continue to praise his name because everything, Mr. President, that I've owned in this life and where I've reached, I've gave it to the glory and honor of God. I can see a good friend of mine who is giving his life to Christ. One of my key worker, political worker, she's baptizing today. And spread the word of his coming again and tell someone about the love of God. Amen, amen. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Put your hands together for uh, Mr. Miller. We really appreciate your coming and taking time to share with us today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the, the series is on in, in earnest. You will agree we have come to the end of, you have big, bigger, and what? Yeah. Biggest, and uh, you may have to put something there as best, right? All right, so the best is yet to come. We have the final week, amen? And uh, listen, I believe, my brothers and sisters, that our lives will never be the same again as a result of this series. None of us, whether we have come to this Canvas Cathedral every night or some other night, or we watch online, our lives will never be the same again as a result of this evangelistic series. And we thank God for the moving of the Holy Spirit. What do you say? Yeah. Now, today we will be having our baptismal service, as you know. Uh, we want to start our program, uh, put the preacher on in short order, so we can get through the service here and get through our baptismal service. Also, 
uh, today and uh, we're going to ask that you work with us, cooperate with us. Because so often when we get there, we, 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 we have some challenges getting in on the, on, the, on the beach and so forth. But we're going to ask that you follow the instruction that will be given at the appropriate time. And we will be back in the afternoon right here. So those of you who may not necessarily go to the seaside, you can stay here because we'll be having a Q&A section of talk priorities at 3 and then we will follow with talk priorities at 3.30. And we'll be focusing on the gift of prophecy. Uh, quite an interesting subject that you cannot afford to miss. Of course, uh, Dr. Douglas will be joining us along with uh, Pastor Damien Chambers, Associate uh, Professor, Department of Religion and Theology at Northern Caribbean University. You can't afford to miss that this afternoon. Now, I want to remind you, my brothers and sisters, as we are now in the, the, the end of the third week and preparing for the final week of the series, that you remember your commitment. Those of you who have made your financial commitment to the series, and those of you who have not yet done so, we are waiting your contribution, your participation, as we enter the final uh, phase, our week of this series. We need your support where this program is concerned. Now, tomorrow, we'll be having a health expo. Tomorrow at 9.30, right here at the tent side. We're looking forward to seeing you come out and, and get your medical attention. That's so crucial and it's free of cost. So we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow uh, morning at 9.30. And uh, finally, uh, we're asking the management team to meet with us this afternoon at 6.30. That's the management team for the crusade. You meet with us this afternoon at 6.30. My brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you. And those of you who would have signed up already to surrender your life to the Lord, because you came to this tent or you watch online and the Spirit of God worked through your heart. And you got to that point of conviction. You know, uh, and, and when you leave, you may have left here or you made up your mind and then a day passes and the devil said, listen, don't bother with it. That's, that's just a devil way of trying to mesmerize you and confuse you, my brothers and sisters. When the Spirit of God leads and directs our lives, we need to cry out unto God. What do you say? And I believe that somebody's going to get the victory today. What do you say, somebody? And so let's stay focused and let's pray for our brothers and sisters who are in the valley of decision, trying to make the decision that today will be their breakthrough. May God bless you and have a pleasant Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath, church. Do you believe that where we are is holy ground? Yes. We are in His presence on holy ground. I invite you to sing along with us. We begin with, this is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here and where He is, His holy. Amen. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is here, and where He is, is holy. 
worthy. Just stop. 
Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. No man, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. God is good and all the time. Certainly, we can say that God has been a good God. And today, brothers and sisters, is the penultimate Sabbath. We know next Sabbath will be the final Sabbath. And as such, we want, when we close this series, we are debt free. Isn't that a good thing? And so, brothers and sisters, I want to make this very special appeal at this time that you will be very deliberate and intentional in your giving because this is God's work and it is never wrong to invest in God's business. What do you say? The church is governed by what we call the trilogy of books, the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and the church manual. And I just want to read this quotation from the book Testimonies for the Church, volume 3, page 393. Ellen White posits, she says, The Lord requires gifts to be made at stated times. 
being so arranged that giving will become a habit and benevolence be felt to be a Christian duty. The heart opened by one gift is not to have time to become selfishly cold and to close before the next is bestowed. She says the stream is to be continually flowing, thus keeping open the channel by acts of benevolence. So don't you say because you have been giving, you will stop. She says that the gift should be continuous. And so I say to each and every one, as we know, five districts converging under this tent. So ensure that you label the tithe envelope and also your pledges with the correct name of the church so that everything can be accounted for. I can see that the ushers are standing in their respective places. So let us now assume an attitude of prayer. Eternal Father, we are truly thankful for this, your holy Sabbath. We thank you, O God, for what you have blessed us with. We pray now as we collect same, that it will go to the announcement of your work. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Of a wide raging river, trusting that I'd get across. And I've made my way through some valleys and deserts, thinking I'd never get lost. I stood at the foot of what felt like Mount Everest, knowing I'd have the strength for the climb. It's through every trial, each test and temptation There's one thing that's sure every time Over and over, again and again, God is faithful oh, oh, oh. Over and over, again and again, through it all He's made me able Stand and survive To come through alive When it sure looks like I could win Jesus is with me So I'll play the victory Over and over again Do I have a witness under this thing today? Oh If you ask me why I have no hesitation God does what He says He will do And I'd simply say that each battle has taught me There's nothing He won't help me through So why should I dwell on the hardships and struggles When I look just beyond them I see the way this will end is with great celebration. My heart, I believe, yes. Over and over, again and again, God is faithful. Oh, oh, oh. Over and over, again and again, through it all. He's made me able to stand and survive. So I'll play the victory over and over again To stand and survive, to come through alive When it sure looks like I could win Jesus is with me, so I'll play the victory
in Jesus. The music has been rich, Daniel. Yes, it has been. It has been. And we're counting up with some baptisms. Yes, we Certainly are. Certainly not counting down. And I think in terms of baptisms, we have close to 100 persons who've been baptized so far. Over. Amen, church? Yes. They're over? Over, yes. Over. Our congregation right. is saying, praise the Lord. And we're expecting more yes. in Portmore. Praise the Lord. We're asking Bridget Stewart and Leon Anderson to join the deaconesses at the back, talking about counting up for baptisms. Congratulations, Bridget Stewart and Leon Anderson. You know, it's time to hear the Word of God. Yes. And night after night, Sabbath after Sabbath, for the last three weeks, we have been blessed Amen. by someone I will call a firebrand for Christ. Yes, <laughs> Dr. Shion O'Connor. Yes, indeed. You know, it is Adventist Christian Education Sabbath today. Oh, yes. It is, and Dr. Shai has been teaching. Praise the Lord. I just love that about Dr. Shai. Can you Shai. attest to the fact that when you listen to the sermons, it's like you're in a classroom? Amen, amen, amen. So we want to welcome our pastor and teacher, Daniel, our counselor and author, husband and father. Sister O'Connor is here. Praise the Lord and welcome, Sister O'Connor. God has been using our man of God to bless us these past marvelous three weeks. But just before yes. he comes, we're, we want to warmly welcome do by, you know his name? By Pastor Roy Dennis <laughs> yes. from the Jamaica Union Conference. He'll be given some greetings, after which he'll do a special prayer. Amen, amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. This is the place to be. Touch your neighbor and say, this is the place. <laughs> this is the place. Touch your neighbor on the next side. Say, this is the place. <laughs> there is, this is the center of the universe. There is no place like this place. Anywhere near this place, this is the place. What do you say? Amen. We are grateful for the power pack preaching that we have been receiving. And I, I, I had to come by today. I was in Dr. O'Connor's territory over there in the Turks and Caicos Island in that union. And, uh, and uh, so I was away. I did not have the opportunity to come. But as soon as I got the opportunity, I said I had to be here because this is the center of the universe. And so I just want to, before I lift up the man of God, before uh, the preaching of the gospel, I want to bring you greetings on behalf of the Jamaica Union Conference. Tent evangelism is alive and well. What do you say? Uh, when, we, when my wife and I came to Portmore this year, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, and the work was strong in Portmore, but we can say, praise the Lord, it is stronger now. Amen. We had a massive evangelistic campaign nearby here, but this one is even bigger. It is saying that the work is growing. What do you say? So the Jamaica Union Conference is excited about what is happening here in Portmore, and I want to bring you greetings on behalf of our president, Pastor Everett Brown, on behalf of Pastor Levi Johnson, the executive secretary, uh, Dr. Adlai Blight, the treasurer, Dr. Joseph Smith, vice president, and all the members of the team at Jamaica Union Conference. I bring you greetings also on behalf of my wife, Keisha, and our family. And we are praying for the success of the program. What do you say? We thank you for your support this year the program that we are emphasizing is all the family in mission. And we're asking every family member to bring in the church to bring one to Christ this year. So we are expecting you to prepare one for this campaign. What do you say? Every Seventh-day Adventist to work with one person for the kingdom of God. All the families in mission. We are serious about the finishing of the work and we look forward to the day when the work will be finished and Jesus will come. Do you want Jesus to come? Yes. And so this is our goal for the finishing of the work and for Jesus to come for his faithful children. Let us continue to be faithful. Let us do our part for the success of this program. I'm going to invite you at this time to stand with me as we offer prayer on behalf of the man of God. Let us pray. 
a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing, helper amidst the floods of mortal hills prevailing, gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today for the privilege to be in your presence. We are grateful for the opportunity to be alive and well. Lord, we are grateful for those who are able to come into worship here under these tents and also those who are online. Once more, your word is about to be imparted. And are we not grateful for the marvelous way in which you have been using your manservant? Today, we lift him up before you again. We pray that Dr. Cheyenne O'Connor will not be seen but that Jesus Christ will be lifted up once more. That his name will be glorified and magnified in this place. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will cover him under the shadow of your almighty wings. We pray that you will take a life call from the altar and that you will touch his lips, that the word that will be imparted will draw men and women, boys and girls, from sin to Calvary's pleading, cleansing cross. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will speak to Dr. O'Connor and through him to every heart represented here today. We lift up our cups before you and we pray that you will fill us up to the brim today and to the overflowing. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as Dr. O'Connor does your business in this program, that you will take care of his business. His wife is here. We pray that you will bless their family, that you will place an edge around them, that you will beat back the forces of evil, that you will fly every trap that the enemy might set against them in the precious name of Jesus. Oh God, we place your servant before you again. We are opening up our hearts to receive from you. Speak now, Lord, because we believe that it is your word. We believe that this is your program. Lord, we pray that at the end of these meetings, that all in Portmore who would love to receive Jesus, they would have received the opportunity and that they will give their hearts to you before it's eternally too late. We thank you for those who are already baptized and for those who are being prepared today. And we pray that as the word is being imparted today, for some it might be considered foolishness, but we know those of us who are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. And so as the word is being imparted once more, I pray that it will cut sin from our lives. I pray that souls will yield to the call of Jesus and that many more will come to know Jesus, whom to know is life everlasting. Open your words to our hearts, to our minds, to our understanding. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's, isn't it so great to be back here again? Amen. Yeah, I look forward for this morning. We want to add my quote of welcome to all of you who have decided to journey from all parts of this beautiful island of Jamaica to be here in the sunshine parish of Portmore. Amen. Oh, you didn't like that. The sunshine parish. <laughs> I understand that you're trying to make Portmore into a Parish, yeah, all right, whatever, <laughs> whatever. But we are grateful to God for what He has done so far. Were you blessed last night? Yeah. Yes, is it okay to be? That's what we would help you last night, and we hope and trust that the Lord spoke to your heart. I want to welcome all who have decided to give their hearts to the Lord in baptism this morning. Can the church give them a round of applause? Yes, tremendous. 
they have decided to commit their hearts to the Lord and we give God thanks and praise for them. I want to welcome a number of individuals who come all the way from Negril and from West Coast Jamaica Conference coming up to support us in this campaign. We are delighted to have them and we just pray God's blessing on them. For those of you watching online, wherever you're watching from, we're grateful to have you. Um, every time we meet here, we will never overlook the hundreds of you that are thousands of you uh, that are watching online. May the Lord bless you real good as we worship together here. I know it's a little hot under the tent and we hope that the Lord will send a cool breeze to cool down the temperature. Amen. We know he can, so we're going to ask him to do that just to cool down the temperature in this place. All right, just want to get some housekeeping matters in place. Number one. So we're about uh, tomorrow evening when you come, we're starting our final week for this campaign. Uh, you know the song, it's crying time again. <laughs> you know that song? Yeah. Yes. I can see the faraway look in your eyes. <laughs> so, this, this is our, <laughs> we're going in our final week this week. And um, maybe it's appropriate just to say it at this time. Um, I, if you have been, were you blessed by the last three weeks? Yes. Amen. If you have been blessed by the last three weeks, then I would, maybe it's appropriate for me to say, this, 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 this effort that the Central Jamaica Conference has put on is a massive effort. And it's really, I must commend them for the investment they make in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, I mean, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. It costs quite a lot. And so I would love to use this opportunity to invite all of you who are here and those of you watching online um, to help us defray whatever costs we have left back for the last week. Is that all right? Yes, yes, yes. So we want you. You can't preach like Paul and you can't sing like Angel, but you can do something to spread the gospel. Amen. Good. So what we want you to do, come tomorrow evening and the rest of the evening, we'd love for you to bring a very special offering to God to say, Lord, this is my contribution to keep the gospel going. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. And those of you online, um, 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 I think the tech team may be putting the, um, the, the information online. I don't see it on my screen, if they could do that, um, where you can make your direct Deposit, um, we love you. Here it goes on the screen. Um, if you can go and write it down, make your direct deposit for those of you who like to do that. And um, we, take, we take all currencies. Amen. US, UK, what else? Huh? <laughs> Canadian. Jamaican, Cayman, yeah, 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 all those strong currencies, we take all of them, amen? We take one cent, ten cent dollar. Doesn't matter, <laughs> doesn't matter what it is. Is that all right? Yes. So we want you to go ahead and um, this is your commitment to the Lord. Lord, I can do some of the things that others do, but this little bit I can do and I will do to the honor and the glory of God. Amen? Amen. So we want to, starting tomorrow night when you come, those of you under the tent, bring that, bring tomorrow night or on Tuesday night or on Wednesday night, make a special effort and we want to see that so that we can leave here rejoicing. All right. Thank you so much. Just want to be aware, aware of that. Okay, let me tell you what's going to happen for the rest of this week. If the, if the guys can put my stuff on the screen, here we go. So this is the final week coming your way. We, we put it one notch higher. And Sunday evening, tomorrow evening when you come, this powerful presentation, just one verse away in your Bible. There's one, I'm going to bring, I'm going to prove it from, from the Word of God to show you just how close Jesus Christ is to the second coming. How close? One dege verse away. And it's in your Bible. Tomorrow night, wherever you do, make sure you're here. Don't miss it. And then on Monday night, I'm going to show you the very last sign. If you see that, that's the 
curtain drawer, right? The drawing of the curtain. That's it, the very last sign. And um, that one gonna shock you. Then on Tuesday night, why heaven gets silent? I peep in the Bible and I notice that, there, that there's a record that heaven was silent for 30 minutes. And I got inquisitive to find out what on God's earth could cause God's heaven to be silent for, for half an hour. What going on up there? That's going to be on Tuesday night. It's all in your Bible. And then on Wednesday night, big presentation, spot check at the pearly gates. Oh, Lord, help us. If when you're going through, you hear beep, beep. Spot check at the pearly gates. And then on Thursday night, no meeting, but on Friday night, Friday night when you're coming, Friday night is family night. So here is the concoction for Friday night. Are you ready for it? Friday night, sex, savior, and salvation. Yep, all mixed up on Friday night right here. Don't miss it. And then we draw the curtains down next week, Saturday morning, with this powerful presentation. When the king comes in. When the king comes in. May the Lord bless you real good. You want another week? Me never hear uno. Stand for Stand for me. Stand for me. We're going to sing our theme song. Good to see my sister Nadine and I think Lita and maybe here. Good to see you, Nadine. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Let's stand as we sing Holy Words, Long Preserve. Holy Words. Long Preserve. Long Preserve. For what? For our walk. In this world. In this world. They resound. They resound. God's own heart. With God's own heart. Let the ancient world.
your people have gathered from the east and the west, north and the south, united to join with Jesus as guests in this place today. Lord, I am asking you to speak to your people all by yourself. This church is not mine, it's yours. So God, remove me and let the people see you and hear you and respond to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now there's a lady in the community, you don't know her, Nadine. Come. Yeah, you don't know her. She's in this community a long time. Yeah. She's in this community a long time. You don't know her. You're going to know her now. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to know her now. You're going to know her now. So they, they don't know. They, they, don't, they don't know this stuff. But this young lady and I baptized the same day come from the same yard. How many of you know Pastor Glenn Samuels? Yeah, yeah. Pastor Glenn Samuels is the one who baptized both of us in St. Elizabeth. One yard full of picnic. And he baptized every picnic in the yard. Including your humble servant, Anne Nadine. She's his She's an inspector here at the 100 man police station. 35 years in the Jamaica, 34 years in the police services here in the Jamaica. Can the church say amen? amen? And remain a servant of the Lord. My sis, thank God bless you. Take care of her for me. We eat out of the same pot, live in the same house, baptize the same day, and going to the same place when the Lord comes. Amen, amen. And I think Leeton was around here. I don't see Leeton, but there are others. Some of the sisters may be watching online, wherever you are. We welcome you this morning. So, every time I'm supposed to speak for the Lord on this subject, I struggle. I struggle. Because I, I, and, and I, I felt it last week before I preach, and I'm, I'm feeling it again, Sister Carly. I'm feeling it again. I am struggling with my church. I am struggling with my church. Because the longer I spend in the Word of God is the more... I'm, I come out struggling with my church because I, I am not yet convinced that the church has a good understanding of God's grace. I am I, I, struggling I'm really struggling that, that our church still have not yet grasped the full impact of God's grace. Is the church with me? Yes, sir. Tell you, I'm telling you where I'm going. I'm telling you where I'm going. Um, are you aware? Are you aware? that Jesus died, that Jesus was murdered, that Jesus was crucified because of the church? Oh, you still get it. Are you aware that it is not Roman soldiers who killed Jesus? That it was his own church? Are you aware, are you aware that Pilate 
wanted to save him and says, why are we killing this man? And, and the church leaders, <laughs> it was the church leaders, say, if you don't kill him, you are not Caesar's friend. We want him dead. Are you aware that the problem Jesus had in his ministry was not on the, with the man on the street, but with the church? Are you aware, are, let me talk to the choir, are you aware that a good for nothing thief on the cross was able to detect that the man dying beside him was the son of God and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. But the chief priest down at the foot of the cross, who is the leader of the church, said, if you are, And you ask the question, how come the leadership of the church don't know that the man on the cross is a son of God, but a crook? How do you explain that? How do you explain it? The, pro the biggest problem Jesus had was with the church. Ah, Lord, help us, help us, help us, <laughs> help us. Um, um, hear me, hear me. Judas betrayed him, church member. Amen? Yeah, Simon questioned him. This man could never be a prophet. Because if he were a prophet, he would have known, help me preach, last week's sermon, he would have known what kind of woman so he really couldn't come from heaven. He can't be God. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. He can't be God. And the chief priests, scribes, and elders refused to accept him. They, they, hey, they question every single thing about Jesus. They question his birth. Hey, this half ages, servant of the Lord says, they even question his birth. That he was born under questionable circumstances. This woman all of a sudden talk about she got pregnant and never knew a man. Ha! They question that his birth is illegitimate. illegitimate. Is the church with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They question his birth. They, even the very place where he grew up in Nazareth, they question, can anything good Come out another right. They're everything about Jesus. They question everything. The reason why they killed Jesus is because in their mind, he didn't fit the profile of who God's supposed to be. Is the church with me? And that is dangerous because there are some folks who have a profile of what the church should look like and who the church should accept and who should lead, and who should participate, and who should be at the front seat, and who should be at the back seat. They have a profile. And if the profile is warped, we're in trouble. Oh Lord. So, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. And, and because, because Jesus didn't fit the profile, I don't know where they get the profile, but in their mind, they ha hammer out a profile, an image of what God's supposed to look like. And when this man come and say, I'm the bread from heaven, <laughs> I am that I am, it really didn't match up with the profile that they had. Is the church with me? So now I'm going to tell you, get rid of the profile you have in your mind. Clear it out. Clear it out. Clear it out. Because God's ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You can't put God in a box. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, you can't set a standard for God. God is above all standard. God is God all by himself. Are you with me? God says, I can curse who I want, curse and bless who I want, bless. I'm still God. Yeah. 
You know what they told me? I'm not criticizing my Sabbath school teacher. But they told me in church growing up, Jesus only used people who are willing. What? Have you guys ever heard that? Yeah, only willing, Jesus only used, God only used willing people. What? Who told you that? Because when I read for myself, not a single one of them was willing. Moses, no Lord, I am st 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 stammer. You can't use me. <laughs> Jeremiah, no Lord, I am too young. Isaiah says, no Lord, I have a filthy lip. Jonah, run away. Not, not a single one was willing. That's why I tell you, stop listening to church people and read Bible for yourself. So, 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 so this morning, for the next few minutes that they have assigned to me, I really want to use a story in the Bible to illustrate what God's church ought to look like. Amen? Yeah, yeah. what God's church ought to look like. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. The, the story is set against a background. The reason, most of you may have heard about the prodigal son, yes? The reason, what most of you perhaps don't even know why Jesus told that story. So here's the reason why he's told the story. Because the reason why he's told the story is even more important than the story itself. So I'm in Luke 15 and verse 1. The text says, then... Let's read together. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to hear him. Could you near to him to hear him? Yep. So right away, we have a <laughs> we have a gathering of tax. You remember who I told you these guys are? For those of you who didn't know, I'll give you a little background. Tax collectors. Now in Jamaica, they're not too bad, but <laughs> But, but in Jesus' days, stay with me. You, you got to get this. You ready for this? In Jesus' days, Jerusalem was controlled by a foreign power. Rome. Is you church with me? The Jews were controlled by Rome. When Rome conquered Jerusalem, conquered the Jews, Rome decided to charge them high taxes. So now the Jewish people have to pay taxes to this foreign government that is oppressing them. Is the church with me? They put up a resistance against it. So what the Romans did, rather than using their own people to collect the taxes from the Jews, they appoint some of the Jews themselves to collect taxes from among their own people and pay over to them. Is the church with me? Now, the Jewish people turn against these Jewish tax collectors and say, the whole of you are traitors because you're not supposed to collect tax for your brethren to pay no foreign people. Are you with me? So they, they now consider these tax collectors as the worst of the worst of the worst. Is the church with me? Yes, scumbags. Scumbags. The sinners we discussed last week Anybody remember who they are? Oh, you don't remember? The sinner, and the Bible, and you designated a sinner in the Bible. And you see, and the sinners, the sinners is a name, is a designation given to women, particularly who are in prostitution. Are we together? That's why last week's story, they designated Mary the sinner. Oh, good. So, so watch me now. So in the Jewish mind, the, hey, 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 the two worst set of people, somebody preaching with me, the two worst set of people you could ever find are tax collectors and sinners, betrayers and prostitutes. Are we together? Good, no. If you understand that, then you'll understand the background of the story. So the Bible says, then, then all, see the word all? See the word all? Then all the tax collectors and sinners 
these scumbags of society, <laughs> the Bible says, they drew near to Jesus to hear Jesus. Any problem with that? At least the, the church should not have any problem with that. Am I right? Yes, because Jesus is the Savior. And these people are sinners. And what the church should want is sinners drawing near to this. Come on, help me, man. What the church should want is sinners drawing near to Savior. Good, 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 good. Now, let's the next verse. The Bible says, and the Pharisees and the scribes. Scribes are like the church clerk. <laughs> the Pharisees are like the elders. The leadership of the church, the Pharisees and the scribes, when they saw so many stack collectors and sinners flocking around Jesus, always being Jesus' company, the Bible said they what? Complain. And you have to ask the question, what are you complaining about? Amen. If sinners are drawing close to Jesus, shouldn't that be what the church want? Then what's the complaint? They co what's the complaint? Saying, this man receives <laughs> receive sinners and eat with them. Mm. Mm. Which means, if he were God, God don't eat with... God don't eat with sinners. And, hey, hey, hey. And, and God don't receive sinners. You see, that's their concept of God and them running church. And by the way, that's not the first time when Matthew, this is where the big problem, when Jesus called Matthew, it nearly mashed up the whole thing. Here's why. In, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, Jesus passed from here and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. So Matthew, Matthew was a tax collector. Is he with me? Guy was at work. Yes? And the Bible says, and he said to Matthew, he says, follow me. So he arose and leave his calculator, leave his pad, leave everything, leave everything and follow Jesus. Mm, this tax collector. Is the church with me? Good. And if you read Ellen White, the stuff on that deserve for ages, uh, he was so impressed with Jesus and was so grateful that even though the rest of the Jewish people criticized him and say all manner of things about him, this rabbi came by and recognized him. He dropped whatever he was doing and he followed Jesus. Is the church with me? Now it happened, verse 10, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, watch me, so, so, you get the back row. So Matthew was so grateful that Jesus chose him to be part of his disciples. In fact, his disciple number five, is the church still with me? That Matthew decided to keep a little reception to give Jesus thanks for choosing him to be a disciple. Is the church still with me? Good. So at that reception, guess who will be coming? All his co-workers. <laughs> who are his co-workers? Tax collectors. Yes, 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 yes. So, so the Bible said Jesus sat at table in the house. That be, and behold, many of his co-workers came out. Amen. And who else come? See now, these are bread and butter. Anyway, you see one, you see the other one. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, many. So the house was filled with tax collectors and sinners. And listen, the last place the church want to see God. Hey, 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 hey. Because in their mind, God is too holy hey, hey, to be in that room filled with So the Bible says that he came and sat down with him and his disciples. Verse 11. And when the, and when the Pharisees saw that this man who claimed to be God, this man who is a religious leader, 
This man who is a rub, what, what, what they are trying to do now is drive a wedge between Jesus and his disciples. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. The rather than go ask Jesus, Jesus, why you eat? No, no, no. They went to the disciples. Hey, we don't understand your master. We don't understand your master. Why your master choose to eat with the scumbags of society? Explain it to us and call himself God. I tell you, the church has a warped concept of who God is. When Jesus heard it, when the, uh, um, uh, 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 the next verse, when Jesus heard that, when Jesus heard it, Jesus don't even allow the disciples to answer. He took it up, he said, he said, he said, he said to them, hey, he said, hey, you have a problem with that? Let me straighten you out. Amen. Those who are well, have no need for physician, but those who are what? Sick, 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 he says, but go and learn what this means. I desire what? I desire mercy, not your sacrifice, not your offering, mercy. And then and before they go, he says, for I learned this, learn this brother. I did not come here to call the righteous. Come on, say it with me one more time. I did not come here to call. Yeah, every church member must know. The church was not raised up to call. Hey, we're not preaching in this crusade to call. Call the righteous. Righteous, you can stay home. This campaign is not for you. We pitch this tent to call sinners to repentance. Hey, man who grinding the hand middle every Monday morning with ganja. This church is designed to call you. Man stink with rum. This church is designed to call you. Man with a gun in their back pocket. This church is designed to call you. Man with ten baby mothers. This church is designed to call you. Those are the people we... Not the righteous. So when they start to come in the church with a cliff in their back pocket. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. They come with their hair nut up and their teeth black with ganja smoking. Leave them alone. Didn't come here to call you see, you see, the church thing is righteous. Jesus came here to call. Now righteous. Came to call sinners to repentance. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sinners to repentance. Hang on, hang on. And when you come, the grace of God will transform you. You grow in grace. The things of this world will go strangely dim in light of His glory and grace. Are you with me? That's why every single one of you hear the preaching tonight, today, you can come as you are. Some church member may not like it, but it's not them you're coming to. It's God. So to make the point, Jesus told them the story. Oh, by the way, all of that was just the introduction. <laughs> Jesus told the story. To teach them this point. Here's a story. Luke 15, 11, 15, 11. He said, Jesus said, a man had two sons. This is Jesus' story, not mine. He said, a man had two sons. How many sons? Two sons. And the younger one told his daddy, say, Father, give me my share of the estate. Let me break that down for you. The estate. The estate is a dead left. Amen. Amen. Yes. So this boy <laughs> knows that when his daddy died, the, all the daddy had will be divided up between himself and his brother. Is the church with me? Yes. And back then, the ratio in which they divided was two-thirds for the older one one third for the younger. So he already take calculator. 
and work out his one third. Amen. And convert it in Jamaican dollars. That's a lot of money. So he already, he already calculated it out. And then he says to his daddy, watch me, he says to his daddy, Daddy, um, the one third of your estate that I will get when you die, um, I, 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 I want, <laughs> I want to know. Lord Jesus. If that daddy was a Jamaican daddy, one box he get you run out of here. In other words, he can't even wait until daddy die. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The boy can't even wait until daddy die. He want it from now. Guys, don't try that with the daddy at home. And you know what the daddy did? The daddy didn't even say a word. No, if it was me, we're going to have a serious argument. Amen. Daddy didn't say a word. Bible said, so the father divided his property between them and give my friend his. Verse 13. Verse 13 says, not many days after, a couple days after, this young son gathered all together. Amen. Must have converted all this stuff into cash. Because young people now in trouble with goat and sheep and all them. <laughs> right? so, so he must have converted it into cash. So he is he's set. And you know, when, when young people have cash, they think, they're, they think they're saying one. Yeah, man, yeah, man. They're the best thing in the world. So he's set. And the Bible says he decided to journey to where? A far country. Anybody know why he chose to go far? The boy, hey, the, based on, watch me, based on the life he wants to live, he really don't want to stay anywhere near home. Next thing a neighbor go tell his daddy, I see your boy, I see your boy. I see, oh Lord, I'm I see you, I see your boy at the, at the rum bar. Yeah, yeah. So rather than doing that, he journeyed to a, a Jamaica has a terminology for four. Four. You, you know, we have some words, I don't know where we get them from. But he, he journeyed to a far country, way out, so that when he's partying down and up, ain't nobody do, no know him. Hey, can anybody identify with that? Mm, 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 mm. And when he reached here, by the way, before you go to a far country, you see, just remember, the further the country, the longer the walk to come back home. When he went there, Jesus in the story said, the boy wasted, the boy what? Wasted his possession with prodigal living. And I had to look up that one. What does that mean, prodigal living? So I look up the word. Are you guys ever look up that word? Or are you just accept it? Prodigal. Prodigal. I look up the word. You can look it up in Google. It says, one who wastes money. M one who what? Who, one who just wastes money. Hey, if that is true, you have some prodigals around you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Some, some husbands are prodigal. Some wife, prodigal. <laughs> some children, prodigal. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you are one of those who just, just spend... Hey, hey, you know people who just spend? Yeah, really, spend, spend, spend. You give them a million dollars and by next week it finished. They just spend. Those are what you call prodigal, prodigal. Don't go home and call anybody prodigal. Let me not take it easy. So the Bible says he wasted his possession with prodigal living. Okay, I'm in next verse. Verse 14. But when he had spent all when the put another way when the money done precisely when the money done <laughs> there arose what a severe famine in that land amen and he began to be in no this is jesus story not mine not mine but i want you to notice in the story when did the famine come ah after the money done 
Yeah, 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 yeah. The father up here after the money. You know, you know, I want to talk to you something. Can I say sometimes God permits the famine? Because had it not been for the famine, the boy's life wouldn't be changed. Are you with me? Hey, sometimes you're going through some hard stuff and you don't know why the hard stuff is coming. God is directing your path. Are you with me? Because even though the boy went far and started to live all kind of life, the eyes of the Lord are still over him. Because once you're a child of God, you'll always be a child of God. And God will do anything he can to save you. Take away your job to save you. Mash up your marriage to save you. Bring death in your family to save you. He will do anything to save you. The famine came. This boy must have thanked God for the famine. He, he was in want. It's one thing when famine come on, you have money. You still have a problem. But when you don't have any, it's worse. So this man is at the worst of the worst of the... Oh, by the way, the Holy Spirit tell me, must tell you. Can I tell you what the Holy Spirit tell me? He don't use the hard life. Ah, the, <laughs> the whole... Pastor Smith, the yard is coming from. He has servants who make his bed. Chef who cook his food. I wait, God, now what do they think? This, this guy don't use the hard life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now, now he's in a rough spot because he neither have money, neither have food, and the mistake he made was to go to a far country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says he went and joined himself. To a citizen of that country, which means that he's in a country as an alien. Yeah. Amen. He don't have no citizen. His immigration status is in question. <laughs> Illegal immigrant. Yeah. Amen. He, he can't get no job because he need a work permit. Hey, he need a, is the church with me? Yeah. He need a work permit. You see, when he was going and had money, he never <laughs> never worry about work because his back pocket is full. Yeah, now that he's empty, he's in a trouble. No job, no money, no food. So he need a job. And oh, oh, I can't get a job. I need a work permit. So he went and, and joined up with one of the citizens of the country. And he sent him in the fields to feed swine. No, no. <laughs> no, hang on. This is Jesus' story, not mine. But this is important, swine. Why? Because Jews and swine, <laughs> Jews and swine, no mix. So to take a job, hear me, hear me. E hey, to, to take, even if you're a pork eater, to take a job to feed pigs suggests the worst, the lowest of the lowest of the lowest you could possibly be. But I have to give the boy credit. He take the job anyhow. Yes. Amen. So he will, so he start feeding swine. Uh, this is not my story. This is Jesus' story. The text says, and while he was feeding the swine, he gladly full his belly of the pig food. Ah, Lord Jesus! Even though nobody give him it, which means, which means. He stole it. Stole it from who? From the pig. That's how far the boy went. Fell from the pig. Which oh, you don't get it, do you? Which means that the pig has dinner guaranteed. Which means the pig is living a better life. And you ask the question. How could you fall so far and so quickly, my friend, from a life of royalty to a state where pig living better life than you? This is not my story. This is Jesus' story. Is the church with me? Good, verse 17. So, so, so while he was there eating the pig food, 
He said, you have to see him. You have to see him in the pig pen. Pig pen is a nasty place, you know. And by the way, pig don't want it clean. The worst thing you can do is give pig clean, clean place. No, pig want it to be mucky and nasty. That's their comfort zone. Amen? Yeah, don't want it. You have to see him sitting on the fence overlooking the pig already just fill his stomach with some of the pig food and the Bible says while he was there he came to himself what does that mean in the pig pen in the midst of his situation watch me his mind journeys back home is the church with me yeah, 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 yeah. His, ha, his mind drifts back home. And he started to look in the kitchen, look in his bedroom. Ha, are you with me? And he said, he said, hang on, hang on. Something is not right here. How many of my father's servants, the chef, the gardener, the janitor, all those people that my daddy hire, how many of them have bread enough to spear? And I, what am I? Son, and I am son, and I'm here eating pig food. Something not right with this picture. Amen. And so now, watch me, now, he longed to go back home. Oh, Jesus. Because in his mind, as bad as things back home, no way, no better than he had. So he decided, hey, 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 the, the, the gardener and the, uh, and the butler and the housekeeping staff and all of them who wash dirty plates in my daddy's house, they are living a better life than me. And so he began to wonder, I wonder if, because you know, I've already, <laughs> watch this, I've already taken everything that belonged to me, so I don't have anything back home. I can't go home to claim anything because I've already taken my position. But I'm wondering if, by the grace of God, I wonder if home will take me back. I used to be in the church singing and preaching and teaching Sabbath school and living a good life. I know I got messed up, make wrong decisions, make bad choices, find myself in a pig pen, but I wonder if the church will take me back. I used to lead out in the church. I used to be tied up and rough and tangled up with God. I used to be, have a good life, good reputation, but I got myself messed up in a far country and I'm wondering. I sit in my mess. I need to get out of this mess. But will my church take me back? Will they require me to sit at back bench? Will they see me differently? Will they treat me differently? There are so many people still in the pig pen out there who want to come home, but when they look at home, oh boy, home no look too. When they look at home, they're not confident that home is willing to take them back. Are you church with me? And some of them scared of coming back home and they eventually die in the pig pen. That's why I told you, I have a problem with my church. How can I get my church to understand the love of God? Wow. 
Because if we do this place, every church will be jam-packed with prodigals coming home. So he sat on the edge. You can see him sitting on the edge, looking on the pigs below him. Processing this thing. Processing this thing. Can I go home? How many, how many, how many servants my daddy have? Uh, and they, they have food to spare. And I'm son. I am son. Amen. I'm son. And I'm here starving. Something not right. And the Bible says, Bible says, verse 18. I wish. <laughs> watch this, watch this. His mind went back home. And when his mind went back home, his mind saw his daddy. The mind, his mind landed on his daddy. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, he, and knowing who his daddy was, he felt comfortable. Hey, that if, hey, hey, whoa, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He knows that there's a brother there, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's hoping that when he goes home, that he will see him before brother see him. Because if brother see him first, hello, somebody. If brother see him first, Brother gonna stop him at the gate and says, not under my dead body. You don't have anything here. Keep moving. Some people don't come home because they know brother is still at home. So the text says he decided, I'm gonna take the risk. Amen. I will arise and, and I'll go where? Go to whom? Go to whom? My father. Amen. When you come back in the church, you're coming back to your father. Not the elder, not the church board, not the conference president, not the pastor, your father. I'll go home to my father. Because I know, no matter how messed up I am, my Father's love will pardon me. I'm going home to my Father. And then, and then he sat down in the pig pen and practiced a speech. Ah, Lord. You got to see him. Can you see him? Yeah, yeah, in practice. in practice with the pig, you know. The pig is the audience. <laughs> he says, I will go home and I'll say to him, Father, <laughs> Father, I have, I have sinned against heaven and before you. He must have practiced it, the tone of voice. Fa and then pause. Father, well, let me get this right. Father, Amen. Can you see that? This is a man that is working on his salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This man has a sense the need to come back into God's grace. Are you with me? So the speech is here. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And hear me read. Hear me read. This is a speech. And I am no longer what? Worthy. Keyword, daddy. I am coming back. I just want you to know, I am aware, I am conscious that I've already exploited all that belong to me. I am coming back knowing I am not worthy. Come on, say, I am not what? I am not worthy to be called your son. Hey! Daddy, I know I messed up. I know I disgraced the family. I know I embarrassed your name. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So I'm just letting you know, I already know that I messed up. I'm not worthy. I ain't coming back to claim sonship. I ain't coming back from a room. I know. This is what we call a broken and a contrite heart. 
So he says, I know I'm not worthy to be son. So I'm just asking, are you prepared to take me back in as one of your as one of your servants? I just I just need to get home. I just I just want to get home. I just want to get home. I, I made bad choices. I made wrong decisions. It threw me into relationships that I'm not. I have two children out of wedlock and no husband right now. I just want to get home. I just want to get home. Choose the wrong woman, choose the wrong man, choose the wrong job. Mess up Jesus, but I just want to get home, bring me back to the place where I belong. I just want to get home, Jesus. So daddy, can you take me back as a servant? I'll wash the pots. I'll do the bathrooms. I'll cut the lawn. Is the church with me? Ah, I call that humility. And let me tell you, when God sees a humble person, it moves the hand of God. Yeah! And when he finished with his speech, he jumped off the ledge. Ha. I don't know if you even tell the boss he's gone. He arose and decided to head home. But it's a long way home because he went to a far country. Can you imagine him on his way home wondering what things going to be? He alone traveling home. Know how messed up his life has been. Go over in his mind the stupid things that he has done. How he embarrassed his father and his spirit was broken. As he traveled back home, country road, take me home to the land where I belong. Yes, Lord, he walked home. But the text says, when he, hey, hey, watch the text. Watch the, watch the text, watch the text. When he was still a great way off, way down the road. Guess who saw him first? Hallelujah. That's what he, Father saw him. And the Bible says, the minute Father spot him, Father had what? Father had what? This is what the church must have for sinners coming back. Compassion. Compassion. Some of us have too much rebuke. Hey! Compassion. Bible says the father had compassion and the, fa and the father start to run. Hallelujah. Fell on his neck and what? And kiss him. Embrace him. Can we have a church like this? When the young people mess up, can we have a church like this? That's what God looks like. Compassion. Compassion. If you're out there, folks, and you have made some mistakes in your life, come home. God will have compassion on you. He wants you to come home. He fell on his neck and he's kissing. Huh? Watch, watch how this thing is nice. This thing sweet, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, watch how this thing nice. So now, now the son practiced this speech for a long time. Ready to deliver. Are you ready for this? So after daddy hug him and kiss him, son says, son says, dad, um, this is a speech coming out. 
I have sinned. That I just want you to know. I, I know I've sinned against heaven and against you in your sight. And dad, I'm no longer worthy to be called, come and help me with the speech, to be called your son. There's a full stop there. There's another part of the speech, am I right? What the other part go? Make me one of your, good. So my man will finish the speech. Is the church with me? Yeah, right here, see there? I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So the speech is to continue. But when we go to the next verse, hey, the father interrupt him. Son! Hey, Jesus, help us in the church. Son! Your, your speech is not necessary. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Your apology. <laughs> Elizabeth, your apology is not necessary. The very fact that you come home is enough. The fact that you decide to come back, stand at the altar and give your heart to the Lord. You don't have to apologize to the church. Your speech is not necessary. Just come home. Just come home. Just come home. The text says, the daddy, look at it, verse 22. But, my man giving his speech, the father stopped. But, the father said to, my man giving the speech, father said, Shh, turn his attention. I don't want to hear no more from you. <laughs> turn his attention to the servants and said, hey, you guys, go in the closet. Ah, oh God, some people in the church can't take this part. Hey, 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 is the church with me here? Go in the closet and bring out which robe? Which robe? The best one. The most expensive, the most glamorous, the most precious, the best one in there. Bring it out. Oh God, when will my church Bring out the best robe for a member who got pregnant out of wedlock. Who would mill my church? Bring out the best robe for somebody who is in gambling and drug addiction. When will the church bring the best robe for people who mess up and want to come back in? Don't bring the second hand robe. Hey! Now bring the second hand robe. Don't, don't discriminate. Because in the Father's eye, there's no discrimination. Bring out the best. And put it on him. Hey, the, the servant, Pastor Simon, the servant must be stunned. And then, and then, and then he says, and by the way, the, you, you go into the jewelry section <laughs> and put a what? A ring on his finger. Let me help you with that because some Adventists have a problem with this text. <laughs> this, is Je this is Jesus' story, not me. But the ring is significant because how you, in royalty, every prince has a ring. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. Servants don't wear a ring. Are you with me? But if you're a son of the king, you wear a ring. Is the church with me? So when the daddy says, bring a ring, put on his finger, the servants knew right away that daddy was replacing the boy back to the, back to the position of sonship.
treating him as if nothing, oh, Jesus, treating him as if nothing happens. When will the church reach that level? Treating the boy as if, oh, come on, help me preach. Treating the boy as if nothing happens. Put a ring on his hand. And, and then go in the footwear section. And bring what? Which means that the boy come on barefoot. Oh, Lord of mercy. I checked the text and I didn't see a, I didn't see a verse where the boy go bathroom and wash up before he come home. All the stinking smell of the pig food. He came home just as he was. Pig food in his teeth. And the father put the best robe over his nastiness. Put sandals on his feet. Ring on his finger. Just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me. We tell sinners, come as you are. And when they come, people start my No, you can't go to church like that. Oh, I is not finished. Then the daddy said to a third servant, you who work in the culinary department, he says, hey, hey, go around the house back. And he said, the big fat rummy. That we keep in for Christmas. Oh, oh. Get the fat, get the fatted calf. Amen. Bring it here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. You notice this guy get the best robe and the fattest calf. And the best and the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. Can your stomach handle that? Somebody who mess up themselves? Can you really handle that? You know, if, if, people, if people mess up and come back in the church, and people say, well, you can't let him do that. You can't let him do that. You can't let him do 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 Hey, hey, kill the fatted calf and let us be what? Let the church be merry. Amen. There are some folks getting baptized today. Let the church be merry. Let the church be merry. Why? For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he's found and they began to be merry. The church must be merry when sinner come home. Be merry. Well, so they throw a big pot. Music playing, people eating, servants were so happy. To welcome back the father, son, laughing and chatting and having a wonderful time. Then in the evening, is the church still with me? The older son came home. It's a good thing he came while the boy wasn't there. He came home from the field. The Bible says, as he came, he drew near to the house. And he heard, help me read. He heard music and dancing. Watch me, watch me, watch me. And he said, he said, that's strange. You know, my yard, never in my life, I hear my father playing music. Ha! What is going on in my father's house? Hey, that's strange. My father don't dance. That's strange. Amen? Yeah, but watch it. Before he went in himself to go look, he stayed outside and called one of the servants and asked him, say, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. 
what, what's going what's going on inside I know this house I born and grew up in it never we have any music and that what's going on and the little servant very naive and innocent <laughs> filled with joy are you with me he have my ice cream licking <laughs> Amen. Enjoying himself. Amen. Because it's, it's merry time. And he says, hey, yeah, man, I can't tell you what's going on. Your brother. With a lot of excitement, you know. Uh, Things said this bigger brother is going to be happy. Yo, hey, hey, we, we, we're having a big party. Your brother came home. And you, you see the big rummy that was the back of the house. <laughs> your daddy killed it. <laughs> Manish water, curry goat. Big party going on. Because your daddy is excited because he received him safe and sound. Man filled with excitement. And when you look in the face of the brother, the countenance change. The Bible says the big brother, help me preach. Angry, so mad that he would not go in. Angry, how can your brother come home and you're angry? How can your brother who has messed up his life in drug den and prostitution den and all kind of stuff straighten up his life and come back to serve God and you're not happy? How? And he wouldn't go in. And it is the father again who came out, put his arm around him and pleaded with the church with me, pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his daddy, he says, Daddy, I'm mad as hell. These, he said, lo, these many years I have been serving you. I've never transgressed your commandment at any time. I've never done anything wrong. I've never embarrassed you. I've never let you down. I've never, I've never, I've never. And you never one day take up a little meager goat and kill for me and my friends. But this. But as soon as this, your son, who has devoured your, your livelihood with harlots. As soon as him come home, you kill the fatted calf. And he was mad. I have a question for you. You ready for it? I'll close right now. I'm ready for it. Here's a question. If... My question is to the bigger brother. Yes? Yes, I want to talk to the bigger brother. Bigger brother, if you have never left the house, meaning you have never backslid from the church, if you have never broken God's commandment, meaning you live a perfect life, if you have been so faithful, you have been with your father all these years, how come? Nothing don't rub off your father on you. How come? If you have with the if you're in church every day praising God, if you have never messed up in your life because you how come? How come you don't have your daddy's love? How come you don't have your daddy's compassion? How come you don't have any mercy? How come? The father looked at him. And the father said, son, you're always with me. And all that I have is yours. But I got to tell you, help me read. It was what? It was right that we should make merry. And be glad for your brother was dead. Your brother was dead. Your brother was dead. And is now alive. He was lost. And is found. You should be in the party rejoicing.
you should be in the party rejoicing. There are, there, there are too many folks who want to come back in the church but are scared of the big brother. Scared of being criticized. Scared of being discriminated against. Scared, 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 scared. God has sent this message to some person under the tent this morning to say to you, come home. This house is not the brother's house. It is the father's house. Come home. He are weary. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Because God's grace is always greater than sin. Come on! Don't be scared. If you make a mistake out there, if you blunder out there, if you mess up out there, if things didn't work out the way you planned out there, come on! It is better in God's house. God's house. It is better Jesus wants you to come home, come home, come home. I'm going to ask this congregation, this appeal to you. If you are in, let me talk to this congregation. Let me talk to this congregation. Congregation, if you can identify with this boy's struggle, if you have been to that place where you made wrong decisions, bad choices, it landed you at places that you never wanted to be, but by the grace of God you found yourself and you came home to God and now you're rejoicing. If that describes you, stand on your feet and let the whole world. If there was a time in your life when you were in a bad position, wrong choices, bad places, but oh God, you came to your senses, you walk and give the Lord your life and now you're rejoicing. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Let the rest see. Almost all of us have been there one time in our life. One time in our life. Now, now, my dear friends. Now, my dear friends, you are in this place and God call you. If you are in this place and you find yourself in a situation where it is not well with your soul, bad choices, wrong decision, circumstances of life conspire against you. And in the depths of your soul, you want to have a second chance. Says, God, I want to come home. Can I invite you? Can I invite you to raise your hand wherever you are? Go raise your hand. God bless those hands. Raise your hand where you are. God, I want to come home. God bless your hands. God bless your hands. God bless those hands across there. God bless your hands. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God, hey, I made bad choices, made wrong choices, messed up in my life. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm coming back home to my father's house. I'm coming back to put my hand in God's hand. I'm coming back to give myself to the man who can calm the waters. Hey, I'm going to pray for you this morning. Come on. Come on. May I invite you to come. Those who raise your hand, I'm going to invite you to come right up here walk for Jesus walk for Jesus come on up God bless you God I'm putting myself in God's hand I'm giving the Lord my life today giving the Lord Jesus my life God bless you God bless you God bless you my praise team is gonna sing my song for you come in the name of Jesus come come in the name of Jesus come 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 God bless you God bless you come God bless you God bless you Come, come, God bless you. God bless you. Come. God bless you. 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 Come. In holy pages. Yes, Lord. God bless you. Come. God bless you. Come. God bless you. Come. God bless you. God bless you. God. I want to surrender. Surrender to you, Jesus. God, surrender to you. Hey, I make some mistakes in my life, but I'm surrendering to you. Yes. Yes, Jesus, come. God bless you, you're coming. God bless you, you're coming. God bless you, God bless you, you're coming. And grace will always Always be better than sin. Greater than sin. Is there another? God bless you, come. Praise the Lord, you're coming.
Praise the Lord, you're coming. Praise the Lord, you're coming. Christ will always, always be greater than sin. Yes, so come. Come. Calvary. Calvary has proven it time and time again. God bless you. 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 about your soul salvation come come is there another come is there another 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 god bless you they're coming 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 yes sir is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Always be greater than sin. Sing that song. They're still coming. Still coming. Sing that song. They're still coming. Since we start this campaign, there are, hey, have you noticed, hey, hey, have you, uh, sermon is finished, but if I, if I had more time, I would have preached a little longer. Have you noticed that the true son who was lost was the older one? Have you noticed that he was lost in the church? Have you noticed that he was in the church, but he was lost? Ah, Jesus. Since we started this campaign, a number of church folks, both this church and other churches, have recommitted their life to God, have started over. There are so many who are dying for a start over. This prodigal asks God, I want to start over. I mess up in the past, but I want to start over. I want to start over. I want to start again, again. I'm going to make this last call as the praise team sing the amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Start for those here, the preacher. If you came to this campaign today and there's a desire in your heart, you know your life situation. You know you perhaps have been in a far country. Bad choices, wrong choices that mess you up. By the grace of God, you plead with God for a start over. Today is your day. I'm going to ask you to leave your seat and come. It says, God, if you will take me home. I want to start over this morning. Come, come, as the praise team sing Amazing Grace. Come, this is for you, this is for you. Come, this is 
for you. That saved a wretch like me. Sing that song I was. I was Come. Was lost, Come. But now Come. I'm found. Hear the preacher this morning. Come. 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 You used to walk with the Lord and you slipped away. Come. You used to be tangled up with Jesus and you slipped away. Come. Come, come, come. This morning is your morning. This morning is your morning. This morning is your morning. Come. Is there another? Is there another? God bless you. I see you coming. I see you coming. How precious is with God once. You are walking with God once. You used to be in the house of the Lord once. Situation and circumstances drag you out. The Father say come. The Father say come. The Father say come. The Father say come. Is there another? Is there another? Can we get some volume on her mic as we sing? Sing the song. Praise the Lord, they're coming. Praise the Lord. Lord, my Savior, yes, Lord, has ransomed me. Dear another. Praise the Lord, they're coming. His mercy reigns on any love. Amazing grace. Sing that chorus one more time. meeting I must close this meeting the Spirit of God declares there is still yet another fighting struggling don't fight God don't fight God don't fight God if you are struggling it means that God is trying to save you don't fight God. Yield up to God and come. Come, come, come. I don't know who God is working with. Come! Last call. Come. Come. Hold somebody's hand and come. Says, Father, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Take me back, Jesus. Even as a servant. Come. I don't know who God is waiting on. Come. Come, 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 final call. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come! Don't let the enemy hold you. Give Jesus the victory. God bless you. Is there another one? Is there another one? Is there another one? Is there another one? God bless you. Is there another one? God bless you. God bless you. Come, you know yourself. Is there another one? Is there another one? Today is a day of decision. Is a day of decision. Thank you, praise and praise work, praise the team. Thank you, musician. Thank you. Thank you. This is the moment of deliverance. Today, we leave in church to the sea to give God his children who surrender their heart to him in baptism. This is your opportunity to do so. 
I am going to, uh, can, can I ask you guys to come up on stage for me? Come and just get some space for these people behind you. Just come on up. Just come on up. 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 There's some space behind you for people. Come on up. Amazing. Come on up. Come on up. Uh, come on up, 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 come on up. We just want some space behind. Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Want some space behind. Come on up. Come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Sing that song. Come on up, come on up. Don't be afraid, come on up. But now, come on up. Come on up, come on up, come around, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Was blind. Was blind. Come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Come on up. Come on up, come on up. You guys at the back. Come on up. Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come a little closer. 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 problem we run out of space at the altar that's a good problem I'm gonna invite as many of you as possible to come on up 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 come up come up come up I'm gonna ask those seated who have made that commitment to the Lord to come on up stand for me stand for me I want you to go at the back of these people so the folks at the front just come forward Folks at the front, come forward, come forward, come forward, Psst, come forward. Hey, I'm ugly enough to be on stage. You're prettier than me. Just come. Just come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Hey, Amen. Come a little closer, come a little closer. All right, those at the back, just let those folks stay at the back. We're going to close up here. Can the church say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. A number of individuals, some have already gone, decide to give their hearts to the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. You can make some space. They're coming around. Make some space. Those at the back, come up a little closer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, a number of individuals, a number of individuals, they're coming around. Come around. All the folks getting baptized today, praise the Lord. Can the church say amen? amen. Yes. 
Amen. I have one empty gown. I have one empty gown. I have one empty gown. You need it. Somebody claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can the church say amen? We, we have one empty gown. Is there anybody else who decided? God bless you. God bless you. Can the church say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have one empty gown. God wants his children. Is there another? On the pulpit, on the platform. God bless you. God bless you. Can the church say hallelujah? I have one empty gown. Is there anybody else? You're coming home to your father. You're coming home to your father. You're coming home to your father. You have compassion. Is there anybody else? Jesus, I may not even have come leave my house deciding, but by the grace of God. Is there another? God bless you. There's one over there. Praise the Lord. Can the church say amen? God bless you. Is there another? One empty gown. One empty gown. Oh my, that's hers. Praise the Lord. Let's give her a seat. Give her a seat. Can she get us give a seat right there? God bless you, girl. God bless you. Hey, God's people are making their calling an election. Sure. One empty gown. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Oh, is that lady's gown? Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there another? God bless you, girl. Yes, Jesus. Is there another? Is there another? One empty gown. We're going home with the Lord. You're coming to the Father. You ain't coming to the brother. You're coming to the Father. Is there another? Is there anybody else on this altar? Who said, preacher, in the name of Jesus, if the Father will take me just as I am, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hey, can somebody say, hallelujah, somebody's there. God bless you. Is there another? Is there another? One more. One more. Father, I am not asking to be son, but it's better in your house. Is there another? Who want to say, Lord Jesus, I am surrendering my life today. Not another day. Maybe you didn't even come prepared, but the Spirit of the Lord spoke to your heart. Hey, you used to be walking with God, but you slip away. Today is your day of rejoicing. Is there another? Is there another? Final call. Final call. Final call. God bless you. That's your gown here. God bless you. Come give him the gown. Can you give him his gown? Praise the Lord. Can the church say amen? Amen. Hey, brethren, don't get angry with the preacher. Hey, Abraham negotiated with God. Can I just get five more minutes? Is that all right? Five more minutes, five more minutes. Is there another? Yes, yeah, sing that song. Is there another? Ah, say, in Portmore, God's people are going home. Is there, God bless you, girl. Can the church shout out hallelujah? Hey, is there another? 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 When we've been there 10,000 years, praise the Lord. Is there another? Right side. Bring the best robe. Best robe. Best robe. Best robe. Best robe. Is there another? Is there another? Final call. Is there another? On this platform. Not yet give your heart to the Lord. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? I must close this meeting. I must. Amen. Everybody else a card. Everybody else a card. Everybody else a card. Pastor Sumit is joining me. Was blind. But now I see. But now I see. Thank you so 
much. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. After 120 years, Noah had to stop preaching. Today, I have to stop for the day. I have to stop for the day. I want to give God a shout out to this moving of the spirit in this place. Hallelujah. God, the sons and daughters of God are coming back home. Not perfect, but coming home. Coming home to a father full of compassion. And my God will forgive you. You will find a place in the kingdom. Amen. We are going to, hey, here's how we're going to do this. Here's how we're going to do this. Those of you who have decided to give your heart to the Lord in baptism with your gowns, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I'm going to ask you to stay on the lower end. Those of you, those of you who have made that commitment as a preacher, I have not made that decision today, but I'm here because it is my desire by the grace of God to surrender to him. I'm going to ask you to stay on the platform and those with the gowns to stay at the bottom. Is that all right? So I'm going to ask you guys to come up. If you have a gown, stay at the bottom. If you don't have a gown, come up for me. Those of you up here with a gown, stay, come to the bottom for your vows. Amen. And those of you without a gown, good, good, good. Those of you with a gown, go down to the bottom. Those of you without a gown, stay. If you have a gown, go down to, yes, you have a gown. You have a gown yeah. to the bottom. Yes, there's a gown here. Yeah. Right, yes. yes. Okay, good. The rest of you, you don't have a gown, come up for me. If you're down here, you must have a gown. Come up, sis. Amen. 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 Can the church say amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to ask. So here's how we're going to go. So here's going to go. For those of you who are up here. Number one. Do you accept and you're certain that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? He is Lord of your life. And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with God? Do you want to do that? Amen. Raise your hand. Can I hear the church say amen? amen? Number two, one thing about the evangelist is that he preaches from the Bible. He allows the Bible to speak. Do you, therefore, accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental belief of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with the teachings of the Bible? Can I hear the church say amen? amen. Final one says, final one says, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes and offering and a life of service. That means at another crusade, some of you, one of you might even be the preacher. You'll be working as a deacon. Hello. You don't know what plans God have for your life. And wherever he leads, you want to follow. Is that your pledge? Bow your, with your head with me 
as we pray. Before I pray for you, I am seeing that you are in an attitude of prayer. Thank you. We need to hear from the church. To the members of the church, you have seen the candidates raising their hands, that they have accepted Jesus, they have accepted the teaching of the Bible, and they want to be baptized. Will a member of the church make a motion that we accept these individuals as members of the church subject to their baptism? I so move, thank you. Still talking to the members of the church. All those who are in favor of the motion and you want these individuals to be baptized, only baptized members of the church, can I see by uplifted right hand? Amen. If you could just turn and look around. Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up. These are the members of the church, and they are happy for you, and they want to see you get baptized. Amen. Take the hands down. Amen. All those who believe that they should not be baptized, can I see by the same side? Turn around. No, not one. Bow your head with me as we pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we are happy to know that you're a God of second chance. And all of us here today, oh, somehow, like the prodigal son, we have all been messed up. But God, there's a way back home. And we're happy that there's a way back home. So today, dear God, your people have come. And they are coming back to you. And oh God, like that father, just put your loving arms around them. Help them to know that there is forgiveness in Jesus. And he who the son set free, they are free indeed. The devil is a loser. The devil have been defeated. And there is victory in Jesus. So Lord, as we leave from here to the place of baptism, go before us and do your work yourself. Defeat the enemy. May we have a glorious baptismal service. And your name, may your name be honored and glorified, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Amen. Let the church shout hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hand and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. We serve a wonderful God. Amen. For those of you who are, about to be, who are about to be baptized, you're making the best decision in your lifetime. And God is with you. From here on, we're going to ensure there are some buses waiting for you. For all those who will be baptized, make sure you get a seat on the bus, Bible workers. You need to ensure that the candidates get on the bus. Um, you need to ensure that they are well seated and you need to ensure that they are taken care of. So you're going to ensure that you go to the bus. Amen, amen. Amen. What an electrifying, divine, our service, Lizeth. Praise the Lord. If you want to go to the site of the baptism, Jesus. we have no space on the bus for you. And tenderly. So you'll have Jesus to find your way. Calling for you and for me. Uh, Daniel, I'm so glad that Jesus called me. Yes, yes. Called me by name. And each time I have this worship experience and he calls me again. You know, it's always rejoicing in my heart. I can imagine how our candidates are feeling today. Yes, I am sure they did. And 
or they are feeling, you know, blessed and electrified to give their hearts to God. And the sermon this morning was so pointed, so necessary for a time such as this, because it doesn't matter how far from God you've gone. God is always there to receive you. Amen. It doesn't matter what mess you were in. He's always there with open arms. Amen. And here is where we get cleaned up. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And Christ generously put on, on us the robe of righteousness. Um, let me just say, yes, Jesus is calling, but we also have some calls to make. Eh? Yes, some we do. Some motor vehicle owners. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. So I want to point out Mazda. License, let me just get the license plate right. License number 4590JK. You are blocking the buses, so I'm asking that you please remove your vehicle as soon as possible. You are blocking the buses. That is Mazda, license plate 4590JK. Yes, and we also are asking the driver of Belta. 3049JL and also 5118HY to relocate your motor vehicles. Thank you. All right, so we are transitioning into our baptismal service, which will be over by Port Henderson. Port Henderson. Yes. yes. And so our, our candidates will be going there as we speak. But let me tell you for our online viewers that don't worry, don't fret, because later this evening, this afternoon rather, we'll be having our usual talk priorities, or Q&A segment, and then at 3.30, we'll have our discussion segment of talk priorities, and then our Adventist youth will be leading out in the program at 4.30. All right. You know, baptism is a special time. And as we wait, as we wait to count up, I wonder if we'll do 100 today. Let's see, let's, let's see, see, let's see. But as we wait, let us join in this song to transition for our baptism. Happy Sabbath. God's blessings. Amen. Oh, so near, 
Baptism songs, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? All your body functions require it. Water cleanses, refreshes, and powerfully aids your body's restoration. Celebrations, environment. Life only flourishes in suitable environments with the appropriate balance of climate, water, soil, and air. Your environment is crucial for your health, so it's important to take care of it. Research shows the seriousness of environmental pollution. Industrial waste directly affects the two elements most needed for survival, water and air. Though the impact may not be observed instantaneously, such pollution can cause long-term destruction. Deforestation is another worldwide environmental issue. On a massive scale, deforestation often results in damage to the quality of the land. Although about 30% of the Earth's surface is still covered by forest, large tracts of land are still lost to deforestation every year. As stewards of the Earth, it is our responsibility to manage the environment and its resources. Health is God's gift to us, and we must do all we can to maintain the best environment for a healthy life. Celebrations Belief Everyone believes in something. Believing is natural. It happens every day, in plenty of situations, and often goes unnoticed. You might say that the survival of all humans is based on beliefs of some kind. Research has found significant benefits to religious belief. A study of Americans who reached the age of 100 found that religiosity enhanced their health. Although many questions remain unanswered, it's clear that the benefits of trusting in God result from more than simply attending religious services. Belief is also linked to quality of life. It increases life satisfaction and personal happiness and is associated with fewer negative psychological consequences due to traumatic life events. Trusting in a loving, powerful God gives you the ability to enjoy a healthful lifestyle as He fills your life with abundant peace and joy. Cel We are so happy that persons are giving their lives over to the Lord. And as we await their arrival to the sea and to take part in this beautiful service, we're going to be singing.
anthem songs. We're asking those of you who are still online with us and those who are still here under the tent to sing along. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing or are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? from that peaceful shore, but love lifted me.
Amen. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory and granted me victory in Jesus. that his mind could comprehend divine things. His affections were pure and his appetites and passions were under the control of reason. But with the entrance of sin through man's disobedience, this image was ruined and almost destroyed. 
Ellen White says that man's physical powers were weakened, his mental capacity was lessened, his spiritual vision dimmed, and he had become subject to death. Adventist Christian education is a tool that God is using through the power of the Holy Spirit to transform lives, to restore in man the image of God as revealed by Jesus Christ himself. It is for this reason that she says, education and redemption are one. This kind of education imparts far more than academics. It strives to develop the whole person, spiritual, physical, intellectual, and social emotional, a process that spans a lifetime. It requires that the home, school, and yes, you, the church, collaborate with the Holy Spirit through the study of the Bible and the inspired writings of Ellen G. Wright to train individuals for service in this world and for eternity. We invite you to be an agent of change, to pray, support, and sponsor a child, a youth, or even a young adult who needs a second chance in attending one of our institutions across Central Jamaica Conference, because all our children shall be taught of the Lord. In a world with constant demands, every woman deserves a time of peace, reflection, and rejuvenation. Introducing the Central Jamaica Conference Women's Ministries Retreat, Repositioning for More, a sanctuary for the soul where women come together to be nurtured and empowered. Join us Thursday, October 3 to Sunday, October 6 at the Ibero Star Hotel, Montego Bay, St. James for a weekend of spiritual renewal, self-discovery, and faith enrichment. Register now. Deadline for the first deposit is March 29. For more information, please visit www.centraljay.org, email women at centraljay.org, or call us 876-984-2044. Four, four. Sister, sister, make it your date. CJC Women's Ministries Retreat, October 3 to 6, 2024. Welcome to Moments, your gateway to spiritual rejuvenation and connection with the divine. We are delighted to have you join us at our online church here at Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, where we embark on a journey of faith, prayer, and reflection. talk priorities is in keeping with our mission proclaiming the everlasting gospel through the publishing ministry and it's against this background ladies and gentlemen why we have chosen this medium to share with you some hidden treasures in our priority magazines yeah, ladies and gentlemen this is quite interesting we don't necessarily have to close our eyes to pray because you can't even tell the deaf to close their eyes when they pray <laughs> I mean, they have to see what's happening. The Son of God died. Yes. And nobody ever denied that. Yeah, that's it. But still yet today, 
There are persons who believe that there are certain folks who can't die. Even right here in Jamaica, some of them are going to say, no man, they are Cuba man, they are not die. They don't believe. Anytime you ask, accept Christ, your life will be disrupted. There's really no convenient time. So there's no antidepressant drug that's better than exercise and mild to moderate depression. And it has almost no side effects. So sometimes we're so overburdened with work and all the activities that we're doing that, you know, even the dog will cuss. <laughs> even the <laughs> puss at all will throw something at Place him in the Garden of Eden. You're saying that he was not supposed to sweat at that time. Right? Was sweat, he was not a part of it, right. He worked, but he didn't sweat. He worked, but, but he, he didn't, didn't sweat. sweat. That, that, that's that. We don't go there still <laughs> about that. And especially as Christians, Pastor, sometimes we overspend that we spend in the Lord's money. You know, when person said to me, what are you doing? You're looking so young. I said, oh, Jesus is just helping me. <laughs> So stay tuned and stay with us every Sabbath and invite your friends as we look at biblical, theological, doctrinal, health, and social issues that are of priority to us. Put God first. Give to the Lord. Private, convenient, safe. The Seventh-day Adventist Church Central Jamaica Conference in association with Portmore, Tent City, Gregory Park, Hellshire and Brayton District of Churches invites you to Countdown to the End Evangelistic Series with Evangelist Dr. Cheyenne O'Connor. March 3 to 30, under the Big White Tent, Municipal Boulevard, Greater Portmore, St. Catherine, across from the JUTC Depot. Come hear dynamic preaching from Sundays to Wednesdays and Fridays at 7.15 nightly and 9.15 a.m. on Sabbaths. That's the Countdown to the End Evangelistic Series from March 3 to March 30. Come and be blessed. For more information, visit www.centraljaa.org. Celebrations, rest. All humans need rest and relaxation. Without it, we can suffer cognitive impairments. But the chaotic world always has tempting demands and activities that might seem more important than quality rest. When you're tired, the executive functions of your mind suffer. You'll become less effective at recognizing the choices available to you and less capable of deciding which is best. Feeling tired not only makes you more stressed, but also inefficient, slower, less safe, and more likely to make mistakes. But how much sleep do you really need to make sure you stay at the top of your game? It varies between individuals, but experts agree that 7 hours of sleep per night is enough to get by. Establishing a regular bedtime ritual, eating lightly in the evening, and maintaining a quiet and peaceful environment for sleeping will help you get a good night's rest. Being well rested empowers you to be receptive to God's blessings and thus continually restored to optimal health. Celebrations Air Calm down and take a minute to breathe. How often have you heard something like that? It's said because breathing deep and renewing the air within your body helps clear the mind. Just as important as the air itself is its quality. Taking deep breaths of fresh air gives you an improved sense of well-being and improves the function of your lungs. In nature, it even increases the rate and quality of growth in plants and animals. Fresh air is almost a synonym for a healthy life. There is no life at all without it. However, the world today doesn't treat this issue as it should and air pollution has become a real problem. Polluted air is found on freeways, at airports, and in poorly ventilated areas. As a result, 6 million people, mostly children, die every year from respiratory infections, complicated particularly by pollution. Despite the condition of the environment, you can still ensure you get as much fresh air as possible. Avoid tobacco smoke, take deep breaths, and exercise regularly. And as you celebrate a vital and fulfilled life, always remember, the indwelling presence of God, the breath of life. Celebrations Temperance When you hear the word temperance, the first thing you think of might be balance or the ability to find a balance in life. But balance is a relative concept because everyone has different needs and priorities. 
In many cultures and communities, the word temperance has been forgotten altogether. A term from the past. Does it still apply to your life today? Look at temperance from a health perspective and you'll see it as something crucial. True temperance teaches us to dispense entirely with everything hurtful and to use judiciously that which is helpful. So you can see how temperance isn't a checklist of behaviors. We should or shouldn't have. It's a way of life, understanding that in excess, even good things could be harmful. Taking stock of your own life, you might find there are areas lacking balance, sleeping too little, working too hard, eating too much, or not exercising enough, or even overdoing it. If you ever feel incapable of finding a balance, just remember help is never far away. God is always close to you. He will make sure you achieve and sustain a successful balance in life. Celebrations Integrity As strange as it may seem, integrity is an essential component of health. You can understand the role of integrity in health by making a parallel between honesty and integrity. An honest person may do good or bad, but will speak the truth about it. Acting with integrity, however, is adhering to a moral conviction that won't allow you to do wrong. So integrity means not only saying what you think must be done, but also acting according to your convictions. Integrity also plays an important role in helping us avoid problems. How many addicts started going down the road to ruin because they ignored well-known dangers? Possessing integrity will help you decline offers that could destroy your life. At one time or another, everyone has failed to meet the standard of full integrity. Some have failed so miserably that they caused someone else to be hurt. But despite the inevitable challenges, never forget that your integrity has the power to change your health and your life. Celebrations Optimism there are a lot of synonyms you could use to describe optimism, happiness, hope, joyfulness, positive attitude, high spirits. However, optimism might be best described as an enduring tendency to expect good personal outcomes. Seeing life from an optimistic perspective is something everyone should try. When you face challenges with a heart and mind full of hope, you'll be able to see the good side of things. With optimism, you can find peace and joy even when situations don't turn out the way you had wanted. You can start practicing optimism by smiling whenever you can. Laughter is indeed good medicine. It increases your endorphin levels. It makes you feel better, mentally and physically. Positive thoughts can help too. Nurturing good thoughts about people and situations improves your personal well-being and positively impacts your relationships with others. You'll feel the positive effects of optimism in all aspects of life. Optimism not only improves your health, but also helps you cope with adversity. Optimism is truly the joy of life. Celebrations Nutrition There's no life without food. Food contains all the nutrients essential for health. Yet sometimes, we fail to remind ourselves of this fact and end up eating unhealthy food or not enough healthy food. But shouldn't we try our best to celebrate every meal with healthful food choices? In order to better select the food you eat, you must first understand how nutrition works. Our bodies get nutrients from food through the process of digestion. The nutrients your body needs include carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and more. Consuming the right balance of these nutrients is fundamental to a healthy life. So that leads back to the topic of food choices. When selecting foods to eat, some factors you should take into account are variety, quality, balance, moderation, and avoidance. When you evaluate your food choices based on sound principles, you increase your chances of feeding your body food that will really make you healthier. A healthful diet increases your quality of life. Celebrate nutrition by appropriately enjoying the many products of the earth that God has given to you. Choose a balanced plant-based diet and enjoy a healthier and more abundant life. Celebrations Social Support Social support plays a very important role in health. It helps you cope with stress and even affects your mental outlook and health habits. Social support is vital for healthy growth all throughout life. Adolescents who don't have support at home are likely to become unhappy with life and not blossom into wholesome adults. And for adults not having the caring support of others is frustrating and heartbreaking. So clearly, social support benefits the receiver. But what about the giver? A successful relationship is a two-way street. The better a friend you are, the better your friends will be. And expressing your desire to help others around you is simple. Keeping in touch, being a good listener, and respecting your friend's space are just a few tips. 
Taking the time to build a social support network is a wise investment, not only for your mental well-being, but also for your physical health and longevity. Live a life of praise to God by genuinely caring about the welfare of others. All right, all right. So I'm sure that those who are watching us online or those who stayed with us online would have been anticipating the baptismal service. Yes. However, we will be showing a delayed broadcast yes, of the baptismal service because we had some, some glitches. Yes, but we want you to have the experience. So please look out on the platform for a delayed broadcast of the baptismal service. The water is troubled at Port Henderson. And yes, it will be our pleasure to share that with you later. Just in case you have not eaten yet, you are a newly baptized member, you haven't had lunch yet, your lunch is at Brayton Church. And if you're visiting with us and you still haven't eaten, we have lunch for you at the talk shop. Just ask any of our ushers where you can find that location, the talk shop, which is on this compound. That's right. So on behalf of the hardworking production team, I'm Daniel Pasley. I'm Lisseth Martin. Oh, Daniel, before we go, mm -hmm. a bank card was found two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Could you please ask Elder Edwards to give it to you if it's yours? Thank you. <laughs> so we say again, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs>